Okay, so we are L-I-V-E live. Good night to everyone. I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to uh, come in. And once we hit our 500 roughly mark, then we will get started. I'm going to jump straight into it tonight because I'm about to tell a lie because we're going to do this very quickly. And you know what my version of quickly is, right? Four, five, seven, 13 hours later, but no. I, I need to get some rest, so I definitely got to be off tonight, all right? <clears throat> so let's wait for some folks to come in. Sister in Christ, okay. Barbara, I see you. Dr. Barbara, Sandra Corley, okay. You guys just come in. And I've heard people complaining that they don't get notices from uh, YouTube. Well, the reality is I think you're the problem. What happens is when you click, when you subscribe to someone, you have three uh, categories in which you could subscribe to the top one, which is the one you should be clicking, where anything that person ever posts on their channel, you will be notified. So if you're not being notified, revisit the subscription uh, button for my channel and to make sure you click the top one, which says all with a little bell next to it. So whatever I post, whatever I, whatever comes on, you will get a notification, all right? <clears throat> uh, what else? Oh, yes. The teaching that we did on Saturday morning, boy, listen, <laughs> man, the emails are still pouring in. You know, it was a really, 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 really uh, life-changing message for many people based on what they said to me, all right? Uh, uh, being a good manager. We all are managers. How we manage will be determined, <laughs> Okay on the instructions that we follow. Very simple, very, very simple. We don't have to go into no, no long rigmarole, okay? Okay, Marilyn Ferguson, I see you, okay. Uh, Maria Granger, that is, yeah, Maria Granger, I think that's this, yeah. Andrea Ojeda, I see you guys, okay, you guys keep coming in, but I'm so excited tonight. I am so excited tonight. We have a beautiful, 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 beautiful teaching tonight. <clears throat> Something that's really gonna hit home, you're going to check yourself. You're going to check uh, your family. You're going to check people that you connect with. My God. My God. You know, some people could be a blessing to your life. And the minute you disconnect from that person, and when I say disconnect from them, disconnect from them before the time. Because, you know, there's a set time for everything. And there's a purpose and a season for everything. In other words, nothing uh, lasts forever. But if you disconnect yourself from a person whom God has put in your life to bless you, you're in problems. You know what is a perfect example of that? The story about Lot and uh, Abraham. Lot was doing so well while he was with Abraham. In fact, he was doing so well that they had too much wealth to share on one land. And Lot decided to, to go his way. And he said to Abraham, even ask him which part of the field or land should he take? So Abraham said, whatever you want, because Abraham was quite confident that God had blessed him and will continue to bless him. So no matter where he goes, we'll be blessed because of him. The minute our uh, Lord departed out of the company of Abraham, the blessed man, the blessing, where it was originated by God through Abraham, all hell went loose for him, break loose for him. Yeah. And that's why many people, they allow their attitudes, they allow their their uh, indecisiveness, poor judgment, to foolishly assess and critique and judge blessings God has placed in their life, whether it's a person, place, thing, promotion, and they allow their foolish mouths and foolish whatever ideologies to keep them at the back of the line. It would be these same people who will become chronic complainers. Oh my God, nothing never works for me. It looked like everybody getting blessed except me. Again, they come with their side of the story all the time, typical of them, always painting themselves to be the victims, you know, someone always wronging them after all they did for other people, and it looked like God promises aren't true, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you are listening tonight, whoever you may be, listen to me, until you become honest and truthful to yourself and look at yourself as the problem just for once in your life, see yourself as the, as the thorn in your own side. You are your own thorn. No one else. You. You. The things you spew, the negativity, the, the always wanting to correct others but cannot be corrected. Always debating to be right but don't want to do what is right. Get out of here, man. You know? 
And like I always say, man, those who, who insist on trying to correct others, I always say this, man, this is the litmus test. Let's see your fruit, man. That's it. Listen, you won't convince me that you are who you say you are. Show me the evidence. Show it to me. Okay, your name is John Doe. John L. P. Doe. Okay, now let me see some credentials. Let me see some ID, passport, driver's license, something. But don't go around correcting everybody when your life is a shamble, huh? When you can't go two steps. No, man. No. And when you speak against those who God is blessing, you trying to curse his blessing, you putting yourself for it at the back of the line. <laughs> you need to get it right. You need to get it right, man. Okay, so we are 421. Okay, we got 19 more. And then we are going to jump straight into uh, second gear with this. This is going to be very, 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 very informative. Very informative. Very informative. I hope you guys took yesterday's lesson. And if you did not have any New Year's resolution, I, I suggest you start with that right there. Even though this is March already, it's never too late to start. But you got to be committed. Like I said yesterday, uh, the word instruction come from the Latin word uh, structus, which literally means to to build. Okay, it also means where we get our word structure from. So, the the following of instructions is what produces structure. People, I'm gonna help you right now. People who have no structure. So, Kevin, how would we know these people? Look at their lives. People who have financial issues constantly, they have no structure. People who have no control over their mouth and feel like they can say anything, and when the consequences come, they want to play the pity party, they have no structure in their life. So what is the root cause of a person not having structure? They don't ever follow instructions. Never. And when I say instructions, instruction pertaining to the various things in their lives that they have to deal with. Right. For example, a person is always shooting off their mouth, all right, and always getting in problem. They don't listen to instructions. Well, what kind of instructions? Let's go back to the rule book. The rule book says, he that keepeth his mouth. The word keep it there literally means to guard, to protect, to filter what comes out of your mouth. It says, he that keep it or he that guards his mouth. Listen to this. Simultaneously will guard his life. Well, what is this? You all hear this? What I say will determine how folks will respond to me or how life will come at me. He that keepeth his mouth, just shut up for a second. He that keepeth his mouth simultaneously or at the same time is literally guarding or keeping his life. Some people just don't know when to shut up. They, 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 they ask questions, they answer it. They don't ever give you a chance to talk. They just go and go and go and go and go. And, and you're trying to give them wisdom. You're trying to give them understanding. You know, they interrupt you. They talk, 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 talk. So after 755 hours of talking to them, they don't know nothing what you say. And now you look at their life. You look at them and you let's go back in your life now. And let's look at the consistency here. The consistency of failure, the consistency of loss, the consistency of never getting ahead. Why? Wonder, wonder what the common denominator is. I wonder what that is. Hmm? You think you talk too less? You think that's what the problem is? <laughs> he that keepeth his mouth, listen carefully, will simultaneously keep his life. It didn't finish. And he that opened wide his lips, many destructions shall he have. My God, if I'm not mistaken, let me pull it up. I think that's Proverbs 15 or 13, verse 2 or 3. I can pull it up right now. That's, that's a juicy piece of rule right there. Proverbs, let me try Proverbs 13 first. Yeah. Yeah, here it go. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. He that God his mouth is simultaneously, without even knowing it, guarding his life. That's what I'm reading here. The second part of that scripture, but he that opened wide his lips, no filter, just talking, 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 correcting everybody, chastising everybody. They're always right. They never wrong. They never apologize. Just running over with garbage, utter nonsense. It says he that opened wide his lips, listen, 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 shall have destruction. 
Mighty God. You all hear this? So let me see if I get the rule book straight. So, Mr. Ewing, based on what you just read, are you suggesting, are you implying, are you insinuating that destruction for these people are not because they have haters? No. Not because folks are jealous of them? No. Not because people just like to take advantage of them? No. I don't care what they tell you. So what it is. In regard to what we just read, their own mouth is causing them to be at the back of the line at age 35, 40, 55, 60, 65, 70. They live, they, they, they live the life of oppression. Why? Because of their mouth. Well, Ewing, how is that possible? See, and this is now how you see how the rules operate. You see, because if death in life is in the power of your tongue, like the scripture has clearly said, so if, if, if my mouth is full of life or death based on what I speak, then it would be wise to guard it, to keep it, as opposed to shooting it off every two seconds, okay? 70 years later, you have made no progress in life. You've accomplished nothing. You're nowhere. And you mad with everybody and their third cousin, except being mad at the one who initiated all of this, which is you. Don't get mad at nobody, man. Get mad at you. When a person's serious about changing their circumstances, the first thing that they do is take a self-introspection. Mm -hmm. Those who love where they are, and when I say love, they don't love it as in I love it, meaning that even though they're saying they don't like it, they're constantly doing what it takes to get what they're getting. And who are these people? Those who refuse to take a self-introspection. They're not interested in that. They just want to point the finger all. They blame everybody. Everyone is the problem. Everything is the problem. No, man, get up. No, when, when I was serious about coming out of my situation, when I had all of these people coming after me with sorcery and people oppressing me on the job, do you, you think I sit back there Huh? And run on with them? No. No. All of my argument, I did on my knees. Huh? All of my argument, I turned on my plate. While they mock and laugh, I realize from the rule book, Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and a season for everyone. Now, this is their time, Kevin. This is their time to oppress you. This is their time to work their witchcraft. Just leave them. Don't route. Why are you, why are you getting in their time? This is their season. Didn't you read there's a time and a season for everything? So why you don't feel it apply to this? Let these people do their witchcraft. Let these people cuss you. Let them do whatever they want to do. The same rule book, book and deal with them. You need to go now and deal with them, but you deal with them from a rule book perspective. So what do you do? Kevin, all these people cursing around me. The Bible say, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, right? Okay, and what else did it say? Every tongue that has risen up against me in judgment, the word every mean without exception, the ones that I hear and the ones that I didn't hear. What am I supposed to do? Let me see if I read it correctly. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I must go and cast them out. I must go tit for tat with them. Did you read that? I didn't read that. What did it say? It says you must condemn it. Did it say condemn them publicly? Did it say go up in their face and say I condemn you? No. I'm on my knees. Father, I condemn every word spoken against me in private and in secret. Every declaration made against my life, against my name, against my uh, uh, everything that pertained to me. You know what I speak, Lord? I speak Psalms 138 and 8, where you said you will perfect all that concerns me. You will make perfect. You will make complete. That's what I'm standing on. So while they cursing, I pray it. Now for them who don't the curse, Father, I bless those that curse me. That's what the rule book teaching me. I bless those that curse me. I pray for those that despitefully use me and say all manner of things against me. Keep cussing me. I love it. Keep it. Keep it coming. While you cussing, I bless it. Why? Because Kevin is in love with the rule book. Kevin don't get up in his feelings and go tit for tat. You know why? Because Kevin long learned a long time ago when he did do that. When God did come to judge. And guess what? While God putting licks on them, and I say, yeah, yeah y'all getting your loan now. And right when he was finished with them, he came and put licks on me. Why? Because I participated in the same evil that they were doing to me. Try that. Get out of here with that foolishness. Get out of here. So keep sending curses back to sender. Keep doing it. And then keep crying. You don't know why things ain't working out for you. You don't know why I look like your enemy succeeding. And you keep, well, keep going against the rules. And then you will see it.
That's it. Okay, now that they're done, last year, let's get into the teaching. All right. So we had 668. Let's get into this. Okay. Part two of understanding curses. I our last teaching, I explained to you what a curse was. And before I gave it, I told you what a blessing was, because you have to understand a blessing to get the fullness of a curse. I'm not going to go through that for the sake of time. But for those of you who are tuning in for the first time on part two of this teaching, which is right now, I strongly suggest to get a full understanding of what we're about to say. I strongly suggest that you go and watch. <laughs> you watch. You watch part one of understanding uh, curses. I have one more thing to say. I can't, I can't let this one slide. I got to deal with this. <laughs> I got to deal with this. This is too juicy. I got to deal with this one. All right. We can get into it right after this. All right. Folks, remember what I said to you before, and many times when I minister to you, I say to you, okay, I believe, even though I, I am a teacher, and even though I do my best to break down the scriptures, right? I, I don't come I don't I don't claim to be a know it all, and you know that. Okay. And I says, you know that if if I am incorrect in something. Those of you who've been with me long enough know that Kevin have no pride. He will come back and he will say, this is wrong, right? Now, one of the reasons why I do that is because I want you to learn and pardon that. You don't know everything. None of us know everything, all right? That's number one. Number two, I don't ever want you to believe that you're so, uh, you're so knowledgeable about scripture that no one could correct you. And it is, and your way is the only way, and your interpretation is the only interpretation. Don't ever get to that point. All right? While something may be so laid out in scripture sometimes, trust me, there may be a scripture that may seemingly contradict that. Now, we all know that the Bible don't contradict itself. So wherever you see where it could appear to be a contradiction, all that simply means for me, I don't know about you, we need more study here. That's all it is. I need to now look at this Hebrew meaning for this or the Greek, and I need to know the 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 the, the tense in which it is you use, who is it's speaking to, what were the conditions under this. See, in that case, I need more detail. And the detail is in the scriptures, but it is hidden in the etymology of the words. The etymology means the origin of that word. So when these writers were writing the Bible. There were certain words that they were using in their translation of it that could make it appear to be a contradiction, but it's not. So this is what you do. You go and you look at, okay, so this is the Hebrew word that they use in the Old Testament. Let me see what the original meaning of this word is. And now it's going to come together for you. Now, I said that to say this. I've had, and I'm going to plead with you already now. Please don't send me any more emails on my, I did a teaching on uh, the mystery of salvation, right? I did a five-part detailed teaching. Even though it was detailed, I made it clear it is not exhaustive, meaning that I, I did not cover everything. There's so much more to the mystery of salvation. What I did do, though, is hit the core components of salvation, right? So like with all of my teachings, pre and post them, what I would do is I would put up a vague statement but what I would do, and the whole idea is to get you to go and research. And then I would put the scripture, it will always be uh, from the teachings that I would have done. Okay? So I put up a teaching, uh, sorry, I put up a post about two weeks ago. And this was after I was done with my teaching, I believe. And I put up the post, this was after I was done with the teaching on the mystery of salvation. And in this post, I said, listen carefully now, people do not go to hell. Because of sin, they go to hell because of unbelief. Right after that, I put there John 3 and 18. So if if it was me, if I read it, I would have said, but now hold on, now, hold on, now. this will make no sense. Me, I would have thought that. So what I do, well, I would have gone and read, because clearly if this person put a scripture here, let me go and analytically look at the scripture to see the correlation with what this person is saying. And if I don't get it, especially if I know this person to be one who teaches soundly, if I don't get it, 
let me email them and say, Kev, you put up something. Let me just see. What, what are you trying to get out there? Because it's not like you saying people don't go to hell for sin. But belief, now come on. No. So you have some who, who know it all. You, you can't correct them. They were God has gifted them to correct everybody else. They cannot be corrected. And even when they're wrong, they will never apologize. What they would do is retract their statement. I've had that before. There are times when I would put up a statement and I would put inverted commas because it would sound as if I'm going against the word of God, but I make sure I put the inverted commas. Immediately they come back with a long post. Oh, I know you was a false prophet. I never claimed to be a prophet. You're wrong there. And they run on and on. The point I'm making here, it's very simple. Some of the links that the people sent me, and I, I went, I visited these people's pages, and I look at those who agreed to what the person says as in to say what I was saying was wrong. And here is what I'm saying to those who not make, who have made a comment or whatever. Before you get into something that you don't know the origin of, go and seek the origin. Because I look at some of what the people put up and they're saying, this gentleman say that you wouldn't go. No, that isn't all that I said. I placed the scripture there, which you did not put there. So now you coming on board to say, oh, that's true. That's true. That's they all about talking foolishness. Yeah, but here it is again. Here it is again. He that keep it his mouth. Let me know the facts first. Let me see what the real deal is first before I add my two cents into this. So let me explain here. So listen what the Bible says. The Bible says to, to explain that point. When I said, we do not go to hell, we do not go, no human being goes to hell for sin. If that was the case, my sisters and brothers, no one of us will make it into heaven. You know why? Because that same Bible said to you, it says, for we have all sinned, every human being, and you're still sinning today if you're safe, and come short of the glory of God. That's what I read, Right? Now watch this. So John 3 and 16, 17 and 18. Listen what it says. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever does not sin shall have eternal life. Did you read that? Tell me. I'm listening. Because we all sin every day. No one should go to heaven. See, this is, and I'm not trying to be controversial. All of my teachings, and you know this, is to get you to think, is to get you to break that shackle. Because what it does here, based on their understanding, you have to work your way into heaven by not sinning. When, when you accepted Christ, his righteousness, his righteousness, okay, not only reconcile you to God, but, it, but it's because of his righteousness. He, when God look at you now that you believed in him and believe that he's the son of God and that he's the only way, he's the only way, okay? There is no amount of sin that you could stop doing that will cause you not to go to hell. You know why? Watch another scripture. The Bible says, for our righteousness, meaning as much as we try not to sin, at maximum, it's our, our filthy rags to God. They could never measure up where God will say, okay, Kevin, I've watched you over the past three years and you haven't sinned. I watched you. I watched you. Now you can be reconciled back to me. No human could have done that. So what did Jesus Christ do? Sorry, what did God do? I am going to send him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to become sin for those who are sinners. It is through him. So the, the Bible says, let's now read what it says. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen, listen, listen to qualify for eternal life. That whosoever believed, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. I believe that he came here to earth. He was killed, buried, and resurrected, and now seated on the right hand of God. I believe that he's the only way to get to the Father. That's what the belief is. So he says, whosoever believe, not whosoever don't sin, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have what? Eternal life. Verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, 
like the ones who's preaching another gospel. Oh, if you sin, if you do this, you do that. Oh, God watching you. You can go to hell for lying. You can go to hell for this. You didn't just read that just now. If I receive Jesus Christ, okay, I have eternal life because I believe. So one person put a scripture there to refute what I was saying. And they said, even the devil believe. That was to say that what I said was irrelevant. Okay, first of all, that scripture is entirely foolish to put there because the devil cannot be redeemed. Demons cannot be redeemed. That is totally irrelevant. I have no place in what we're talking about. We are discussing, what do I do to get to heaven? Because if it was a matter of not sinning, right? How, how is that going to be possible, oh, Jesus Christ? God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus Christ might be saved. I love verse 18 because this was the scripture that I attached to my statement. Verse 18 of John 3, very, very clear. In fact, let me pull it up because I will read it precisely the way that it said. And this is why you must read and listen to understand and don't follow these people who are full of debate and controversy. Look at their life. They're going absolutely nowhere. Nobody pay no attention to them. Nobody listen to them. Why? Because it's all about, I write. I'm, I'm smarter than you. I know more revelation than you. I'm more powerful than you. Right. And how many souls you want? Who have you healed? Whose life of change? through all of your controversies. Get out of here with your garbage. So listen to this. John chapter 3, verse 18. Listen to this carefully, because this is the scripture that I had attached to my statement. Okay? We do not go to hell because of sin. Sin isn't the ultimate factor. Yes, yeah, sinners are there, but that's not the primary reason why they are in hell. The primary reason, listen to John 3, verse 18. He that believe it on him. Who is this him? Jesus Christ. And what does that believe it on him mean? Just believe that Jesus exists? No, that's not it. Because he told you in verse 16 what that really mean. That mean I accept the fact that Jesus Christ and believing in him and believing that he's the son of God, this is now what's going to reconcile me back to God. I must repent, confess my sins. All of that come under the umbrella of belief. He that believe it on him, listen carefully, listen carefully. He that believe it on Jesus is not condemned. Kevin, what does that mean? Well, let's continue to read and I'll explain it. He that believe it on him, which is Jesus, is not condemned. What does the word condemn mean? The word condemn means someone who has been declared guilty in a matter and is now sentenced to a punishment. God is saying, if you didn't say, if you didn't accept my only begotten son, if you didn't believe that he is the Christ, and he is the one who knew no sin, that became sin for you, and you didn't accept the free gift of salvation and the plan of God that heaven made possible for you, he said, if you don't accept that, you ain't going because you are a sinner, you, ain't, you, you are going because you refuse to believe to accept the free gift of salvation. Very simple. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Listen, but he he that sinneth not is condemned. I didn't read that. He that believe not is condemned. So those who say otherwise, what they're preaching or teaching you is a message of works. Meaning that as long as I don't use the F word that I used to use in every sentence, I'm good to go. As long as I don't fornicate, I'm good to go. No, 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 sweetie. You are going to go there because you reject Jesus. You didn't believe that he was the only way. You didn't say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I have wronged the kingdom of God. I repent of all of my sins, Father. I'm coming with godly sorrow. You didn't do that. Let me bring this baby home for you now. Watch this. So the guy right here just got saved, accepted Jesus Christ, made a godly confession. God, I truly mean it right now. I repent of my sins, the iniquities and transgression. Father God, please forgive me. I surrender my all to the cross right now. The guy is saved. He has been instantaneously filled with the Holy Ghost. And according to John 3 and 16, he has been instantaneously written in the Lamb's book of life for eternal life for Jesus Christ. Not Because he's not condemned anymore. What does this also mean? It also means that whenever he messes up, he is not condemned by God. How do you notice, know Kevin? Because Romans 8 verse 1 says, Now therefore let there be no condemnation in who? A specific group of people for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
and why would a person be condemned? They would be condemned because they did something wrong. So the sinner did, sorry, the Christian did something wrong. And Paul said, hold it, stop it right there. You're not going to judge this Christian who sinned like you judge the one who didn't accept Jesus Christ in sin. Because the one who didn't accept Jesus Christ, whether he sinned or not, he is condemned because he never accepted Jesus Christ. Hence, we do not go to hell because of sin. We go because we did not believe that Jesus Christ is the only way and accepted all of the protocols for salvation. We didn't do that. So get out here with your garbage. Talking nonsense. Go, go spend the rest of your life saying to yourself, I'm not going to sin anymore. And at the same time, I'm not accepting Jesus. I'm just going to stop smoking cigarettes and drinking liquor and frolicking with everybody and walk around with my hypocritical, self-righteous self. And let me see that take you into heaven. So next time, watch the videos before you utter garbage, okay? Go read the scripture I gave for you to go and study to show yourself approved. Instead, you made you, you decide to vie for the fool award and make a perfect fool out of yourself, okay? So don't, don't do it no more. Get it right, okay? So let's get into our teaching tonight. Just have to let you have a piece of that, all right? So understanding curses part two. So tonight, we're going to talk about the different level of curses, okay? And this is going to be very interesting because you're going to see it, if you want to be honest with yourself, in your own life. Listen carefully. Before you got saved and even afterwards. Because there's another erroneous uh, thought of school out there. <laughs> I To me... <sighs> Excuse me. Again, I don't claim to know it all, but I got just a small. I excuse me. I may not have all the sense that somebody else may have, but I got enough to reason properly. So there's a school of thought out there that says that once a person is saved, that they're no longer under a curse. Once they've accepted you, and there's no scripture that says that. There's absolutely no scripture, none. You could find. You could go to Galatians all you want. Show me. Show me this reading. After a person accepted the free gift of salvation, every case of sickness, poverty, disease, backwardness, mentalness, whatever, everything that is contrary to the will of God to their life, take on wings and fly out of their life. Oh, let's go. Kevin accepted Jesus. I guess our work is here. Let's go sickness. Let's go sexual immorality. Let's go lust because we don't have no more space. Let's fly on somebody who did not accept Jesus and let's now continue the course. Look, show me the scripture. Let me see it. I'm reading on it. I'm reading on it. Read to understand people. Hear me? I teach you. And that's why I give you the scriptures. I don't want you to believe me. Go, call, you know what I want you to do? Call me a liar and say, I can, let, me, let me look for it myself and then I will say whether or not you're true. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to follow me like a fool. And you know, I don't believe in that. I want you to get an understanding. And when you don't, you ask the Holy Spirit, but stick with the scripture. Because when he speaks to you, he can speak to you through the scripture. Don't mind these people who got a bunch of titles around their name and their life ain't going nowhere. You want to chastise everybody. Chastise yourself. That's what you do. But anyway, so like I was saying, <laughs> like I was saying, right? If you accept Jesus Christ, you have eternal life. You have the Holy Spirit. You have a whole righteous package. You get a, a, a basket of pure benefits, promises, and so on, all right? Now, if you are sensible, and I hope that you are, and I believe that you are, I trust that you are. If you, last week, had cancer, would you agree with me? I, I want to help, I'm going to walk you through this. Would you agree with me? Is cancer a curse or a blessing? Okay, that's number one. Number two, last week, I'm using last week, I'm going to tell you why. Last week, you were broke, worse than the Ten Commandments. They're coming, in fact, the bank already gave you a letter that tomorrow morning at 9 p.m., they're coming there with the locksmith to change the locks and to put the plywoods over the windows to oust you out of the house. So you broke, you owe everybody, you owe over $400,000 in mortgage, you owe everybody. That was last week. Last week, again, you 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 had a, a, a what's the thing name now? You had mental challenges, okay? Last week, mental challenges, okay? Uh, sickness, poverty, all that. Okay, I say last week because guess what? You had all of this 
before last week when you got saved. You got saved last week. Today is now Sunday. Let's talk sense now. Don't let's talk foolishness. Today is Sunday. Poverty is a curse. Sickness is a curse. Mental, uh, the Bible says he did not give us, he's not a God of confusion, he's a God of order. So that's clearly a curse. If you got saved last week, my friend, and according to these clowns, that since you're saved now, you're not under a curse anymore, then why didn't the bank give you back the key? Sorry, why? Let's see if the bank, no, 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 we still got tomorrow morning. This is a Sunday now. Let's wait. Let's wait till tomorrow morning, 9, because the bank promised they come at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Let's see now that because you got saved, poverty is going to fly away. And the bank is going to write you a bill and say it's all paid in full by Jesus. And the doctors are going to come running to your, your, wherever you are sleeping under the bridge because you can't go in your house no more. You come in there or wherever you is and say, hey, we just look at the report and cancer flew away also. So make it make sense to Kevin. See, that's, see, I'm not a fool like other people. I, I don't just repeat what people say. No, I had to question myself. Okay, if, if they're telling me, okay, if I'm not under the curse anymore and Christ became a curse for me, it, it must be more to that. I must study further because if the curse didn't leave me when I got saved, then what you're talking about? What, what, you, what you say to me? You are delusional. Why didn't your cancer leave? Huh? Why didn't your husband who, 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 who walk away? He didn't divorce you yet. Why when you got did, when you got saved, he didn't come run back into your arms? Why that didn't happen? Tell me. Because if you can't explain it to me, then what you're saying to me in essence, poverty is a blessing from the Lord. Stage four, throat cancer, where they had to cut a piece of your tongue, that's a blessing from Jesus. Uh, uh, being uh, 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 frustrated in life and can't get ahead, anti-progress, God love you. That's how he blesses children. That's exactly what you are saying to me. That Does that make any sense to you? Does that make any sense to you? Now let's see what really makes sense. What did Jesus Christ do? Okay, because the Bible says, uh, curse is anything that hang upon the tree in uh, Galatians 3, which is the origin, where that originally came from was from the New Testament. And Christ became this curse, and the curses he took on, right? So what Christ has done is made the way. He says, now that you have accepted me, a part of your spiritual package, a part of your righteous package, a part of your promises, that through me, Jesus Christ, you could break whatever curses on your life. But let me make it clear to you, it will not just walk away. Talking mess. Make it make sense. Make it make sense to me. That's all I send you. I make it make sense to you. Now, now that I did my part, now you now explain to me why you just told me the curse, you don't have no curse over your life. So explain to Kevin L.A. Ewing right now why cancer is still riddled in your body right now after 30 years of being a Christian. Make me understand it because you tell me you're going to more curse. And that is what, that, that's what, what, what a lack of knowledge does, Hosea 4 and 6. My people, not the sinner, my people perish. Why? Because of a lack. Let's turn there because I will break this down to you. Because if you still toting that foolish notion that you are not long, you are no longer under curse because you get saved by you, 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 whoever tells you that nonsense, clearly don't care about you. So Hosea 4 and 6. Let's break this down. Listen to what he says. How does he start out? He says, My people. So who he's talking about? The people of God, like me and you. My people, uh-huh are destroyed. How is that possible if I'm a, I'm a part of the kingdom of God? My people are destroyed. Why? Because of what Kevin is saying right now. They lack knowledge. They love riddles and rhymes and foolishness. Don't call me Kais. I'm not under Kais. What are you talking about? Don't speak that on me. It been on you. Clown, it been on you. If, if you're smart, you would stop being prideful and listen to the word of God. Read it to understand it, not to debate it. And now said, by the name of Jesus Christ, the one who knew no sin, who became sin for me. The one who God says that if I believe on him, not only am I reconciled, but I'm entitled to all of the promises, including being healed, being set free in my mind and my body and my finances and my relationship. But it does not happen automatically. Get out of here. Pure ignorance, stupidity. It makes absolutely no sense. If, if that was the case, people would have been lining up to get saved. You telling me if I get saved right now, I ain't gonna be poor no more. You telling me if I get saved right now, 
my bank account now is minus $10 billion. You're telling me right now that not only will I not be in the minus anymore, I would have miraculous money on there because poverty is a curse. So that mean, that mean if I get saved right now and I'm no longer cursed, then millions should be there. You telling me now that I have this 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 thing going on in my body. You telling me if I accept, you don't think people would have been lined up right now? Because we heard that this Jesus fella, once you accept him, the curses just break off running out of your life. Get out of here, that foolishness. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. You're talking nonsense. No debate. I keep telling you, stop debating these fools. Don't listen to them. They sit behind computers just looking for someone to challenge. Just looking to, to just refute someone and they're always looking for someone who's popular so that person would respond to them so people could pay attention to them i don't pay no that's why i don't call their names no more all i say to you right and i've been teaching it for a while stop debating do not your job is to obey the scripture not to debate it you're not looking for back and forward what i'm looking for like i tell you before i am not looking to be right that is never my intent my intent is to discover the genuine, authentic truth to do right. That's what I'm trying to do. I want to be correct. And when I, me leading you with these teachings, I want to be in right standing. I don't want to never intentionally mislead nobody for my pride or thinking that I'm right and nobody could correct me. That's what those fools do. And you can be just like them, sitting behind a computer like a clown all day, complaining about everybody, complaining about everybody's doctrine, everybody this and that. And you can be just like them going nowhere in life. 50, 60, 70, 80 years later, they throw you in the ground, six feet, no legacy, nothing to your name. But the only thing people know you about, you sit down and complain all day. No fruit. Get out of here. Get out of here. My people are destroyed. Why? My people are destroyed, Hosea 4 and 6, for lack of knowledge. Wow. Lord, not because there aren't sufficient promises from you? No. Not because they didn't get their spiritual packages? No. Not because they're not filled with the Holy Ghost? No, they have all of that, Kevin. So God, what it is? Because they lack knowledge. And what the knowledge does, according to Proverbs 11 verse 9b, through knowledge shall who specifically be delivered? Them, the just, my people, God people. So, Kevin, let me see if I get this straight. You're telling me that the people of God are not, I mean, being healed, set free, delivered, not experiencing miracles, signs and wonders, not because they don't have enough faith or none of that. No, 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 no. You've, you've read it. It's because they don't know how to apply. They don't know how to appropriate the, the, the package that God gave them when they accepted Christ. They don't know how to do it. Now, let me tell you what they do know how to do. And you could see the fruit of this. They know how to debate. They know how to be right. They know how to, everyone, they want to debate to look smart. But, but when it comes to application of the knowledge, oh, no, 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 no. They want nothing to do with that. They want zero to do with that. So listen, he says, my people are destroyed. The people of God who should be prospering over the enemy. They are destroyed. Why? For lack of knowledge. Listen, this is the part I want to get to. Because thou has rejected. My God, that's what I wanted to get to. Mm. So if I'm rejecting it, listen carefully, watch the revelation, that mean it was once offered to me. How could I reject something that was never offered to me? That mean a Kevin or someone like him came along and gave truth. But where you want to trump what he is saying, let me, let me, let me, let me come up with my own doctrine. Okay. Meaning that Kevin is giving me the truth, but I'm rejecting the truth. I don't want to hear that. Because I get a better understanding, a better revelation, a better doctrine. Watch what he says for this clown. Watch this. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge, meaning that it was offered to you, you rejected it. I, who is I? God. I will also reject you, you clown. You're sitting behind the computer all day criticizing everybody who's trying to talk God word and bring people to Christ. And listen to me, look at your life. Just take a look at it. All your life, you you in controversy. Everyone you trying to refute, argue it. Everything. Oh, that don't really mean that. Let me tell you how it go. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you that. But I'm reading here that there's a penalty that came along with your foolishness. God says, because you've rejected the knowledge of central Kevin and everybody else, 
I will also reject thee. Oh, no, oh, no, he's not done. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Listen, listen. Seeing that thou has forgotten the law of thy God. So hold on now. See, I, I, love, I, I love to get all up in it. So if he used the word forgotten, that would indicate to me, that is in, insinuating to me, that you had a recollection or at minimum a memory of it. In other words, you knew. You knew what it was. If he said you have forgotten it, so it must have been in your database at some point. So Kevin, what happened to them? Pride. I got to be right. I got to always make everybody know that I know it all. And everything has to be filtered through me. Only God speak to me. Only God give me revelation. Only God give me prophecy. And everybody else got to sit down and tell I to be King Kong. Come and tell you what thus said the Lord. <laughs> See, I love them though. I love them. I tell you, they do no good. Listen, he <laughs> said, I will re also reject thee that thou shall know, shall, that thou shall be no more priest to me. But listen, 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 listen to the penalty. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. You know, at one point you remembered it. This is the part that scared scare me or concerned me. <sighs> Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. I see two penalties here. He says, one, because you've rejected the knowledge that was offered to you, because of your pride, I will reject you. But it's not limited to you, though. And this is another law of generational curses right here. This is another one. He said, now, your children who had nothing to do with you rejecting it. However, watch how your rejection is going to directly impact their lives. So you see, your stupidity... And the height of it is not limited to you in always trying to be right. And I hope you people are listening to me. Stop trying to be right. See, whenever you're trying to be right or whenever you're trying to debate, this is when pride sitting right in your lap. Pride is sitting there. You're not interested in the word of God. You're not interested in souls being saved. You're not interested in the truth. You are interested in your truth. This is how I think it should be. God don't know what he's saying. Let me tell you what he's trying to say. Oh, oh, the creation trying to school the creator. You all see this? Well, what is this? Well, wow. That's what the scripture said. He says, I rejected you because you've rejected the knowledge that I sent to you. Not only will I reject you, you clown, I will also reject your children. But that in of itself will make me want to get it together. Don't let pride, people hear me here. If there's one thing that I pray for, for, I listen, every time I, just about every time I pray, Father, if there's any kind of pride, any kind of lust, any kind of greed, hate, bitterness, unfair, things that I may not even be aware of, Father, please excavate that, dig that up out of me. Because that thing could be right there, sitting right in you for years. And then you become just like the people I'm talking about right now. You feel now, you, you on the scene and everybody should listen to you. You could criticize everybody, but nobody could criticize you. You could correct everybody, but nobody could correct you. There are times when I rush in to write my articles, I may misspell a word and so on. And some of my followers will say, Kevin, uh, in paragraph one, you spelled this word correctly, or Kevin, you have the wrong scripture. Such and such a scripture don't have verse 31. You know what I do? I come back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I made the correction already. See, that's how you break any form of pride that's trying to get up in you. That's how you, you don't allow, you don't allow your ego to, like you cannot make a mistake. No, buddy. And that's why I'm so open about my life. When I tell you about my life and my earlier days of being a Christian, fornicating and doing foolishness, I'm not ashamed of that. I'm showing you I'm a human being. I'm showing you salvation is progressive. Not like these hypocrites who telling you once you get saved, you can't sin no more. If you sin, you was never saved. Have you have any other garbage like that? <laughs> Boy, anyway, you know what? Let me calm down tonight. So Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, right? Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 17 to 18. We dealt with this the last time. But I want to point out something to you because we're dealing with a specific curse here. So Joshua chapter 6, verses 17 to 18. 
It says, and the city, and the city, which would have been Jericho, shall be a curse. And I want you to circle that word because that is the word we're going to focus on. In the Hebrew, there, there, is, there, are, there are different type curses. And each curse, uh, each curse carry a different weight or a different penalty. All right? This one here is the worst one. And that's why I want you to circle this. And for your homework, I want you to go and do a word study. I did it already, but I want you to go yourself because I, I don't ever want you to end the teachings with me. I, I encourage you, man. Any good teacher will be two things, repetitive and always encouraging you to go back to the word. And that is what I constantly do to you. I am not the end all. I, some things I may be saying will be giving you revelation and other stuff. Go back to the word of God. I am not your God. I'm not your spiritual father, uncle, papa, whatever. All right? So he says, and the city shall be a curse, even it and all that are therein. Okay? To the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are her, that are with her in the house because she had, she hid the messengers that we sent. Okay. Verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves a curse. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Okay. So let's pounce on that word a curse. Okay. And the Hebrew word for that, let me put it up here. I have it right here. I suggest you guys get one of these books right here. I mean, this is what I see that there. The complete word study dictionary. This is the Old Testament version here. Okay. And then I have I have this one here. I had these books for many years now. This is the, the New Testament one. I strongly suggest you go online and get a copy of this. These are very, very excellent books. It gives you the original understanding and detail of the word, okay? So now we're going to look up this word, a curse, right? The word a curse, okay? We got it right here. Okay, good. We're going to look up this word because we, in order to go forward with wisdom in this teaching, we need the root, okay? Once you get the root, the, the text can now make sense, okay? So the word a curse, all right? Let me pull this up here. Sorry, one second. The word a curse, okay? Okay, in the transliteration, the word is spelt C-H-E-R-E-M, okay? But it's pronounced, this is how I'm going to spell the pronunciation. It's pronounced, it's, a, it's two words. It's K-H-A-Y, okay? R-E-M. Okay, now is that Kyrem or Kerem? Okay, so this is the word a curse in Hebrew. All right, now listen to what this word means. Okay, it's a masculine noun meaning devoted thing. All right, listen specifically devoted to destruction. Okay, now let me let me go deep on you. So what this word simply means? It means something that is curse. All right, remember I told you in the last teaching. The word curse in essence, in essence, it means to limit. It means to bind, to restrict. So even though this word means to utterly destroy, there's a time, according to the way that they have it in this book, it's a time set aside for this to be destroyed. It also says it's something that God has set aside for destruction, listen, that cannot be redeemed. Another uh, meaning, it says something that have no more hope. But because the root of the word curse in, in all forms means restriction, limitation, then once the, the thing is a curse, there's a date assigned where it will be utterly destroyed. But until that date, it is oppressed, limited, restricted, hindered until the day of destruction. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I just love wisdom. I love it. See, when you go in the root, when you go to the root, it, it, it can make so much sense. So when God says, do not touch up the accursed thing, don't touch it. Don't touch it. He says, lease that thing would have set aside for destruction. If you go and touch it, you will now be set aside for destruction. So guess what happened? You all know the story. Achan, who secretly took 
stuff from Jericho that he wasn't supposed to take. Okay? The, the, the rule says not only will you become a curse if you touch the accursed thing, but you will also bring a curse upon those around you. In this case, Israel. You will trouble Israel. You know, after they destroyed Jericho, they went to fight AI. And they sent a fraction of the men that they originally had to deal with Jericho to AI. And I think 36 of the 3,000 men I think they sent died. And Joshua was like, God, how could this be? When you said in Joshua 1 that you, where the feet of my, where the sole of my feet shall thread, that have you given me. And as you were with Moses, so shall you be with me. This is a promise from the living God. However, oh, I love this. There now is an injunction in this promise, meaning that the natural flow of this promise is coming to a halt. Why? Because there's been a violation of the rules when Achan took it. See, and the, 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 the violation and its, 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 its repercussions wasn't limited to just Achan. See, this is the part I won't get to. It wasn't just limited to him. So he says, do not touch of, touch of the accursed thing, lest you become a curse. So the word accursed means something that has been specifically set aside for destruction. But until the day assigned for its destruction, I can show you another scripture where they call it an appointed time to be annihilated. But before that day come, that person, that thing, that place will suffer all hell in terms of oppression, restrictions, limitations, backwardness. Anything to do with going forward would be anti to them. It's like a double whammy. Boy, I'm trying to help you. I try and help you. Let me see. Y'all look, y'all trying to play crazy. Let me help you right now. Someone you connected with, someone who you married, someone who was your business partner, someone who you had to do a project with. From the time you hook up with that person, like your whole life just went on, on like you were in a freezer. You cannot go forward for nothing in the world. Everything about you just begin to go backward. Why? Because you connected with the accursed thing. You had no knowledge what they were dealing with. You had no knowledge of their background. You didn't listen into that. You were too busy talking nonsense with love at first sight. You was too busy saying, boy, I hear their family got a lot of money, so let me hook up with them and we can do business together. See, you were totally ignorant to the spiritual implication that came along with that person. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. And I tell you this message can check you. See, now you're looking beyond the shape. You're looking beyond the material things. Now that your eyes are opening, you say to yourself, boy, from now on, I'm looking at things from a spiritual perspective. Why? Because that is the origin of all things. Nobody could have seen no curse on Nineveh. Nineveh was, not Nineveh, uh, Jericho was prospering. How do you know this? Because God says, even though they are cursed, here are the things I want you to take out of there. The silver, the gold, the brass. How you could be broken out those things? So you see where you could be wealthy, but still mark for destruction. Mighty God. Mm -mm. So Kevin, what caused all of this? Because they were worshippers of idol and every other God except the God of Abraham. I'm trying to help you. Let's talk sense tonight. Let's talk sense. So the word a curse simply means something that has been devoted, dedicated, set aside, appointed for destruction. But until the day of destruction, that thing, that person, that land, that business will suffer until the appointed time to annihilate it, take it off the map altogether. Hmm. My God. Let me calm down. Let me calm down just a little bit. Okay? So, let's look at some more scripture. Now that you know what that word there mean, right? So, let's look at some more scripture here, right? So, I said, the accursed thing means something that is set aside for destruction. Something that is that has been banned. Meaning that, and that's another description that the, the definition gave. Something that has been B-A-N-D. Banned simply means that whatever your services were, whatever you were dealing, whatever your gifts there's a, there's a blockage, an embargo then. There's an embargo on it. Let me give you an example. Uh, Cuba, okay? Uh, the Americans have an embargo on Cuba. What does that mean? 
all of their goods and services and products and meat and whatever, they cannot go to America. America said, we don't want, we put an embargo on you because of whatever nonsense, your communist, whatever you're dealing with, you will not, we will not trade and exchange and do commerce. Cuba got some of the best doctors in the world. Cuba got, I mean, before all of this embargo and stuff, that used to be the playground of this, this planet. When uh, Batista, before uh, Castro came on, they were, they were prosperous. Let me show you how serious this embargo is on Cuba. Cuba is so messed up right now. The, their top cars right now are Chevy's 1957, 1950. That's their top cars right now. Because there's no trade between the two countries. There's an embargo. So let me bring that to a human. You are gifted. You're good with maths. You're good with accounting. You're good with whatever gifts are. But because you have been a curse, you have been banned, you've been restricted, limited in life. Mighty God. Uh, you're trying to figure out how you logged on. I'm telling you right now. Now, make it make more sense, Kevin. So what? So if something is banned, if something is bind, if something is limited, then common sense would say to me immediately, the question will come to me, what is causing it to be limited? Meaning that, what, what are the components? Because I don't see nothing all in the back. They look pretty free to me. I don't see no shackles on their hand or shackle on their feet. I don't see no blindfoldness on them. What did I tell you last time? And that's why I tell you, go watch part one. I said to you that every curse is managed by evil spirits. Every curse. When, and especially this curse here, the, the accursed thing, everything is loose on them. And that means they are the, these spirits are responsible for managing to ensure that they don't ever succeed in certain areas, if not every area of their life. They are prone to marry the wrong person to secure a divorce. They are prone to go on jobs where they will never, I don't care how much degrees they have, they will never ever accelerate. They will even when it's time for their name to come up, even though they have all the credentials, even though they may be favored by the boss. But because this demon of anti-progress is on their life, ensuring and supervising, you will never see it. You will never get it. They will fire that person first. They will cause that person to get in an accident whereby they can't work no more just so that they will not achieve promotion. I'm talking to someone tonight. I'm trying to help you tonight. The more and more you stay away from Jesus Christ, the more and more you're staying away from the packages to set you free from this garbage. Okay? But don't believe when you accept Jesus Christ, the anti-progress can say, oh, okay, bye-bye. You can go live your life now. That will never in this life or the life to come happen. What Jesus Christ did for you is put things in place for you to not use his name to shut these things down. That's how it works. Don't let nobody tell you no foolishness and tell you sow seed and then watch the demons run. They are liars and thieves. They are dishonest hypocrites, slow belly devils. They don't care about you. I'm telling you scripture. Every curse is managed by a demon. Every curse is managed by an evil spirit. Everyone. Every last one. Their sole purpose. All they're looking for is the reason to get up in that bad boy. Once they got the, they need a reason. Let me help you with that too. So watch this. So let's go here to, let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 26, okay? Because we need, we need like I normally do. Whenever I'm teaching you, remember I'm teaching you from the Bible, which is the what? The policy book for humanity, which is the what? The rule book. So therefore, when I'm showing you where these things have legal right and where you fall short, Kevin will always show you the rules. I just showed you just now, the Christian, the Christian isn't still, un, he, he, he or she is still under a curse, not because Jesus didn't do what he had to do. He did what he had to do. He or she is still under the curse because they listen to some clown pastor telling them that they have sin in their life. That's why they ain't healed yet. Listen, that fool. When I would have showed you, I would have showed you a lack of knowledge is causing them to be destroyed. Okay. Hosea was four and six. I brought you back to, uh, uh, Proverbs 11, verse 9b, it says, through knowledge, which you're lacking or applying, shall the just be delivered. So you cannot be delivered if you don't get the knowledge and apply it. Uh, Isaiah 5, 13, what does it say? My people, again, the people of God specifically, they are gone into captivity. They are restricted. They are in bondage. They are limited. Why? Because they lack knowledge. Isaiah 5, 13, go read it. Hosea 4, 6, go read it. 
Proverbs 11, 9b. Go read it. They jumping up and down. Some assaulting Jesus as the deliverer, doing all of the Kojic dance, all that garbage. Instead of they focus on the knowledge to free themselves, all they are are enslaved disco dancers. That's what they are. They prancing, jumping around, doing all kind of foolishness and then bondage. Satan just sitting down reading the bench. That's it. That's what I like. That's what I like. Come. That's it. Keep it up. Just for that, you just ain't going nowhere now. <laughs> knowledge. That's what I want. Father, give me knowledge. Father, let me let I look, lead me to who you need to lead me to. Father, when I open up the scriptures, let it be about my situation so I could begin applying the knowledge. I said to you before, it has been erroneously said that 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 knowledge is power, lies. It is the most nastiest, filthiest, deceitful lie ever. Knowledge is not power because if knowledge was power, everyone that was in close proximity of a Bible, anyone that even held a Bible in their hand should be filled with knowledge. So you know that you know true, right? So what is the truth, Mr. Ewing? It is the application of that knowledge. How about that? It's the application of it. Did you apply it? No, you too busy doing the prep and the moonwalk in church. You too busy doing the worm on the floor. You too busy swinging on the chandelier. You don't got time to read it. Huh? You came to church, not no acrobat class. This ain't no, 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 no gym place. Sit your tail down and read to understand. Now apply. Huh? I ain't playing with you tonight. You're wasting the preacher time, you're wasting my time, and you're wasting everybody else's time. Huh? When you when it's time for God to judge you, you say, I don't see your name on this list, but I do see your name on the disco duck list. He was good at that. Huh? Unfortunately, that don't give you no points to get in heaven. So you dance your tail straight to hell. <laughs> so let's go. Let's go to Proverbs 26, <laughs> verse 3. Proverbs 26, I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's listen to this. Proverbs 26, verse 3, all right? And I love the book of Proverbs. They have, the way they have it structured is called parallel poetry, all right? Listen to what it says. It says, a whip for the horse. We know that. A bridle for the donkey. And a, sorry, I read the wrong one. Proverbs, Proverbs 26, verse 2. Proverbs 26, verse 2. It says, as the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, a swallow is a bird. So, it's making a comparison. So they call it parallel poetry. So the curse, causeless, or the curse without a cause, shall not come. Okay, so what we just read in part B of Proverbs 26 verse 2, is it's now giving us a law or a rule in regard to the limitations or the boundaries of a curse. So what does that mean, Mr. Ewing? So what the scripture is suggesting is that a curse cannot arbitrarily or by free will just jump on anybody. And this is what makes the scripture so beautiful. And I'm telling you, the more you know the rules, the less fearful you'll be afraid of demons and so on and so forth, or those things that you don't want to go over on that side. See, because fear is keeping you bound. So when you hear demon and evil spirits, oh, I'm so afraid. No, they should be afraid of you if you know the rules. Because while they could be ugly and distorted and raw, raw, at the end of the day, when you know the rules, and this is why the word of God is so powerful, once I declare the rules, or even if I don't declare it, once I'm in alignment with the rules, then they must be in alignment to what the rules say. So the Bible is saying the curse without a cause. So therefore, if a person is under a curse, then based on the scripture, there must have been a cause for this curse. And a curse simply means that, yes, the person is restricted, but they're restricted by demons. Meaning that, what did this person do to give these evil spirits the right to manage this consistent failure in their life, this consistent anti-marriage, this consistent disease, this, consist this consistent poverty? What gave it the right? Because according to the rules, see, this is where you come back. You, you See, when I'm done with you, you ain't going to be listening to more preachers just sh shooting stuff out. No, take me back to the scriptures. Take me back to the origin. Take me back and make it make sense. 
So if I am under a curse, what is the cause of it? What is the cause of this curse? Because there have to be a reason, right? There has to be a reason, okay? Let's go to the book of Numbers. Let's back this up. Let's go to Numbers, okay? Okay, okay, so let's go to Numbers chapter 23. And let's start from verse 21. We can read from verse 21 to verse 23, all right? Now, just to give a backstory here, this is the story about Balak and Balaam, okay? Uh, Balaam was the witchcraft worker and, sorry, Balak was the witchcraft worker and Balaam was the king of the Moabites, okay? Bal Balak, the king of the Moabites, had summoned uh, Balaam, the witchcraft worker, to come and place a curse over Israel. So they took him up on Belpi or the high mountain and to push a, a curse on them. So 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 Balaam said, okay, set up seven altars and sacrifice a bull or whatever on these altars. All right. So what is he doing based on what I've taught you? So they have to follow a ritual to summons a specific spirit to the altar. So the ritual will determine the type of spirit that they're calling. As you would know, all rituals are different. Just like if you in the fraternity, Freemasons, secret societies, anything that dealing with altars and sacrifices, all that hidden, all that smoke, all that stuff means that they are summonsing a demon to that particular place. And everyone who is there will be partake of what that demon dealing with. But that's what we can get into that later. All right. So verse 21 of Numbers 23. This is Balaam speaking. It says, he which is God had not beheld iniquity in Jacob. There was no sin in Jacob. Neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He had, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what had God done? So what is he saying here? Even though Balaam and Balak is up in the mountain working sorcery and trying to call up evil spirits, and the evil spirits, make no mistakes, they are coming to the altar because they are following those specific rituals to bring him to the altar. He did seven altars. Nothing happened. He did another seven altars. Nothing happened. He did another seven. So this is a total of 21 altars with 21 sacrifices. All right? And you know the number seven means completion. So completion means three times the seven, 21. So what, these got, what was at these altars to descend upon Israel would have wiped them right out. God came back. I mean, this guy, uh, the sorcerer says, listen, because God has found no iniquity in Israel. In other words, because there is not a cause, because there is not a reason, then these curses, which are managed by these spirits who are anxious to go on these people, they cannot come. What you saying to me, Kevin? If sorcery is working in your life, and those of you who write me all the time, if you say in your sister, your cousin, your brother, your boss, your friends are uh, working which on you, and you see crows around your place, you see this, you see that, and one of your legs swelling up and this scratching you and their face breaking out, my friend, I want you to hear me. Don't get offended with me because I'm only teaching you the rules. If these things are happening to you, you unknowingly, unknowingly, you're a conspirator to your own demise. Be why? Because of the curse, causeless cannot come. What is it that you're doing that has warned these spirits the right to afflict you? See, I tell you, we talking sense tonight. I ain't come here to play no games tonight. I ain't playing no, I ain't going to tell you God can bless you and God can spin it around. I don't talk nonsense. I am going to tell you what you need to do to accommodate what God done do. God blessings waiting on you. You too busy tied up and, and locked down because of ignorance. 
I am giving you the keys to set you free. What is it? What I tell you, anybody, just like myself back in the day, anyone, anyone who have had enough, anyone who truly want to break this oppression to get to the next level, you know what they do now? They look at themselves. They do a self-introspection. You don't say, oh, the preacher wasn't preaching right. Well, if you was reading right, then you know he wasn't preaching right. You wouldn't waste your time there. You can't say all that seed I give. No, if you read the Bible for what it said, you would never give them no seed for miracle. So don't come with that. You are a co-conspirator to your own demise. Don't play with me. Scripture tell you that. You get offended all you want. Now, when you finish, if you're serious, now do a self-introspection. I had to do it, and everybody who mean business will have to do it. To play with me, I ain't playing with you tonight. Check you, boy. Don't don't come tell me all oh, this man, this husband, these children. Ever since this, yeah, that may be right. That may be right. You know what is your part in all of this? Because we just read in two separate scriptures that in order for these demons that facilitate curses to have any access in a person's life, that person must have something going on that has given them the green light. Get out of here with that garbage. Come like you no victim, Rania. Time you spend pining, oh my God, these people not stop wicked witchcraft and obey, oh Lord, all oh my eyes swell up like a belly see. Yeah, well, stop being wicked. That's all. Stop being wicked. Now, you may be wicked unknowingly. You may be wicked ignorantly. Now, what do you mean by that, Kevin? I, I meet them all the time. I meet them all the time. Remember, I tell, I tell you a story. This lady had come and asked me to pray for us. I said, no problem. <laughs> when I walk in the house and we close the door, right behind the door, right behind the door, is this bottle of ammonia, okay? Half filled with ammonia and, and will actually fill with mud balls with ammonia in it. And I, I knew what it meant. And guess what it meant? They feel spirit with the mud balls in it is going to keep the spirit away. Some people put the ammonia in their house or around the house. Now, you call the man of God to come pray for you. See why I tell you I don't listen to these people when they come with this victim story to me? You call me to come pray for you, right? Because you're saying now... Kevin is a man of God. Kevin is anointed. And Kevin will run these devils today. How could I run them when you already welcome them? You already tell them have a seat and get ready for dinner. How I could run them when you give them the right to be there? Make me understand it. Moses said in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, he says, this, he said, let heaven record this day. Today I've presented before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your seed may live. How you could be saying you was a child of God, but yet you got these black beads around your wrist to keep evil spirit off. Yet you get garlic all up in your pockets and stuff. You're all up in church with garlics all up in your weave because you're saying you know Sister Susie next to you, this wake old bear, and she's been trying to fix you for days because you had a dream about her. So what do you do? Do you get and pray? Do you go and bless her? Because it says, whoever curse you, you must bless them. No. What did you do? You went and go and swallow about 18 cloves of garlic. You went and put garlic all up on your neck and ears and stuff. To do what? Where can I find the scripture that says, if I put garlic on me, huh? It go, the spirits can run. Now, if I want to go to the TV, I thought you put garlic on you to run vampire from around you. So is Sister Susie a vampire? <laughs> make, me, make me understand. And I do find you comical because you're a hypocrite. See, again, you are not serious about deliverance. You, you, you complain about your situation, but you continue to do everything to remain in your situation. And then when I come along and give you the scriptures, you will refute. But you could refute, man, and give you a scripture. God says, because you have rejected knowledge, I will also continue to reject you. You keep it up, I can forget your children too. Don't play with me, boy. All of a sudden, sis, Susie, Susie, you didn't know you was a vampire. Why you think this one of you got but three and a half pound of garlic all up in their mouth and stuff? Because they think you're a vampire. <laughs> you think you're going to bite them one day. <laughs> Telling you it's a vampire. <laughs> you, you call me to pray, but you got all kind of salt in the four corners of your house. You got all kind of dead animals buried on your property. And you're wondering why you're having these nightmares. You're wondering why you're being fed in the dream. Well, the demons you invite to feast with you are feeding you. They're the ones sucking you of your virtue. They're the ones doing it because you invited them. Why you didn't tell me that part? Thank God I know that was. Because I would have come in there like a fool. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cast it. And they'd have beat the hell out of me because I on their territory. That you gave them permission to be. But I say, baby, I can't pray. I, 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 I listen. I, I cannot cast out the owner of the house. 
simply put i can't i can't i can't cast them out you you brought them here you need to go repent you need to go deal but i can't there's nothing i can do for you how how can i how can i cast them out when you've given them every legal right to be there because you're saying i don't need the power of god the power of whatever you use because you know it ain't jesus Tell me, man, when, when did Jesus use that? When did Jesus, tell me, when? when who, 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 who had sickness? And Jesus said, now hold on, before I pray for you, y'all ain't got no mud balls around here. What about ammonia? Okay, ammonia do. Now pour some ammonia around Lazarus before we yuck him out of the grave. Make sure we get the spirits from around this tomb. So people who in the sorcery, and I'm talking about the ones who claim they're doing right, they, they know what they're doing is wrong. You know, the fella tell you, listen, I could take this curse off of you. But you need to go down to the graveyard and do four somersaults and grab some dirt and put it in your mouth and do seven more somersaults and the, the, the curse is going to leave. That that sounds like a godly thing to you. That that sounds like something Jesus will tell you to do. So while they may play ignorant, they're desperate for a solution, but they're seeking the wrong areas to get the solution. And that's why I would say to you again, you know what I know you're serious? You are serious when you first say enough is enough. Okay, that's a good start. Now let me, rather than all, everybody I was blaming, let me check me out. Let me deal with me. I ain't gonna lie, inside of me, I full of hate and bitterness. And the same way my enemies hate me, I hate them too. The same way they ain't forgive me, I ain't forgiving them either. It's right, now you're doing very well. Very good. Confession is good for the soul. Now keep going. The Bible says if you confess your sin, he, God, is faithful and just. First John 1 and 9 to forgive you of your sins, and he can throw in a bonus you didn't even ask for, and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's how anxious he was to get started with the work in you, all right? He needed you to come to your senses and, and to be serious, and you finally had enough. And the evidence of you having enough is not pointing the blame at everybody else. Now I sit down and point the finger at me that I was trying to correct everybody else with. That's why I couldn't go nowhere in life. That's why my hip was planted in some computer chair, staring at the computer all day, looking for somebody page to complain and tell them my doctrine. Get out of here, and your life ain't going to be able to get safe. Talking foolishness. So as you can see, the curse need a reason to come. So as long as nobody touched the accursed thing in Israel, Israel would have been fine. And all the promises God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, he would have been, they would have mastered and shut down and mashed up any one of those Canaanites that come up against them, would have crushed them. But what happened is that the minute that there was a violation in the spiritual realm, how was the violation? It wasn't that the demons weren't there, they were always there, but they had no right, they had no legal right to oppress Israel. They had none. Israel followed the rules right up to the letter until Achan decided to go and mess around. And when he did that, remember I told you what the curse thing is? The word a curse means to set aside for utter destruction, meaning that whatever is cursed, it would not exist anymore once the appointed time come for its destruction. Didn't it happen to Achan? Listen what God told when, when Joshua came to him. Joshua was perplexed, and I would have been too, because Joshua didn't know what Achan did. So in verse 7, in chapter 7 of Joshua, Joshua 7 verse 1, it got it starts off and he says, Israel had sinned. No, Israel, let me turn it there. Let me turn it there. I want, I want to read it correctly. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. Listen what it says. But the children of Israel committed a trespass. Listen to this. Speaking of the children of Israel collectively. Now I know most people can say, My God, that's not fair. See, there you go again. Obviously, you have you don't have enough. If the law says so, there's nothing for me to debate anymore. He said in Joshua 6, 17 to 18, do not touch up the accursed thing, lest you become a curse, and now you cause Israel to be cursed also. So the rules are already there. So it is, it is totally ignorant to have a debate as to what is fair and what is not fair, or what kind of loving God could he be if he can innocently destroy people who are not. Okay, okay, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right with everything you just said. Is he going to retract the law because you, you feel you're right? Is he going to say, hey, that makes sense. Why should I let Kevin children punish for something he did? Oh, no, that ain't. What about I say thinking? My God, I mean, I'm all God and I couldn't figure that out. You, you don't think he has his reasons? Again, these are people who love to complain, but they don't want to do the work for change. 
They complain and murmur. That's why I tell you, I, I just trash those emails when I see them. I don't want to see none of them. Because I'm telling you over and over, if there's a curse in your life like you would have laid out to me in the email, I've said to you 687 billion times, look at you. Don't look at who's doing it to you. Don't tell me your mommy, your daddy, your uncle, your daddy was a warlock. That doesn't matter. Because if there was no reason in your life, I don't. he could have been a warlock to the 88th lieutenant federation of the whatever. It couldn't touch you. When I went through my thing with these people who was working on the witchcraft for me and all of the things that were happening, because I had hate in my heart. I had unforgiveness. Why didn't I preach about it so much? But yet I was a Christian. I was saying, in my mind, I'm the Christian. God, how could you watch these people oppress me and limit me? And you sitting there doing nothing. And I know he's saying to myself, you know what? I ain't gonna respond to this fool. Let me let me just let him live a little longer. And one day he's gonna come back and see where he was judging God foolishly. And I was, because I didn't know the rules. When the rules clearly said in Mark, I think 11, 23, 24, something around there, he says, while praying, forgive others so that your heavenly father may forgive you. And if you don't forgive others, my man, your heavenly father will not forgive you. That's number one. Number two, right? Watch what he says next. He says, now I told you already. Now you listen to these clowns talking to you, but curse those who curse you and blah, 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 and send prayers back three and four and 700 folds. I am telling you, and this is New Testament. I said to you, you said to me, God, these people have sent curses on me. What did I tell you? I said to bless them. Did I not tell you that? Yeah, you did tell me that. And what did you do? I, I cursed them back. And now you're still saying to me, why allowing them to beat up on you? You violate my laws just like them. But you want me to bless you even though you violate it, but curse them even though they violate it also. No, 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 no. When God come to judge, because he's a judge, just judge, he ain't coming and looking through the lens of, uh-oh, oh, Kevin is saved, so... Mm, even though you do it exactly what they did, mm, I'm going to tap you on the wrist now. Go ahead before they see I cheat over you. No. See, these clowny Christians believe God think uh, corrupt like them. Nobody. He told you what to do. You didn't do it. Now you suffer the consequences. Simple as that. But don't come around me debating nothing. But what kind of just God? And that's why I tell you, I don't listen to no debate. I don't engage in no debate. Because debaters are arrogant people. They're arrogant. They, they want to be loud, boisterous, and foolish. Who, who is learning there? How many souls you see is going to come to Christ? Oh, oh, I, I watch him mash up the fellow with the scriptures. Now I want to surrender to Jesus. Come, Jesus, come into my heart now because my favorite preacher always right. Who, how many, what is the percentage of people that come to Jesus Christ from preachers debating one another? Tell me. I'm not about no debate. I'm about getting the root of the problem and giving you the instructions to follow for you to now manage what has been managing you? You want to debate, go somewhere else. And listen to foolishness. No. So the Bible says here that Israel, like Achan, became a curse. They were marked for destruction. Now here's a part you probably don't hear much preachers say. They overlook it because they're so caught up on their curse part. And I used to be one of them until the Holy Spirit showed me something else. Watch what he showed me. Do you know that if Joshua had not decided to eliminate Achan, the entire Israel would have been defeated? Listen to me carefully. To understand that, let's go back over the Hebrew understanding, the original word, a curse, and listen to what it means. It says something that has been set aside for an appointed time to be utterly destroyed. That's one rendering. Number two, something that is not redeemable. There's no more hope for it. God has already judged. It's just a matter of time now before its destruction. Therefore, Achan, who initiated this, if Joshua would have said, no, we can't kill him, man. We can't kill his family, man. No, that, that wouldn't be right. That ain't fair, man. Come on. I mean, it ain't like they did something. If Joshua had made that choice, and Kevin, you're saying that you're saying the whole Israel, yes, because remember what he said, whoever touched up the accursed thing, not only will they be cursed, meaning also their family, but the entirety of Israel who don't even know about this. So if they didn't annihilate Achan and his family like God gave them, because this was the only remedy to stop the right of those spirits from causing them to be utterly destroyed, they had to kill this dude. 
Now, for those of you, I can hear you now. Well, I don't think that's fair. I mean, God, I mean, his beautiful daughter and his Billy Goat and his kangaroos. And what about his, his rabbits? Why should they die? Why should they die? Because God said so. Everybody want to debate God. No, I just don't get that. I don't know why. People just don't take the law and do it. I don't see. It only could be the devil. You broke. You sick. You got all of these things. And when someone give you the solution, you got every other reason not to do it. Can you imagine that? You, you spending your time telling the person, now listen, this is what you need to do. You need to do a fast. Oh, God. How much days? How long? How long? Kevin, when you do your fast, how long before your breakthrough come? <laughs> See, you all know what I have to deal with, boy. You all, you all look at me doing these teachings. If you all know what I have to go through, and I have to pray for patience on a daily basis, because you would have just spent an hour and a half taking your time, going through what they need to do. And at the end of that hour and a half, right? Because this was the only time I had even had to talk. They didn't talk four or five hours. I'm now given, now that I've already analytically went through what you're dealing with, the Holy Spirit's already spoken to my head as it relates to your remedy, and I'm giving it to you. And the only thing you could come up with out of my solution is how long did it take before you was delivered? How long after your fast, God, came true for you? So that already tell me right there, I wasted my time here. Because you know what they're going to do? They're going to go and do the fast, you know, but not from a hard perspective. It's equivalent to going into work. You punch in your time card, you hang around until it's time to punch back out, and you go home. You won't do nothing. And that's so, they're hard, isn't it? They, they're not, and that's what I'm telling you. People like that, when I detect them, and I tell them this, you all know I'm very bold, because I, I have too much going on for me to be wasting my time with you. Clearly. And because I've experienced this, and I've met many people who have, when you have had enough, you will do whatever it takes to get free. If you're going to ask me foolishness like that, you have not had enough as yet. You have not had enough. Clearly, you need some more licks. So go back to the devil, let him finish work you over, and then you can come back here for some, from some if you choose to follow me. Other than that, I don't need to see you no more. When you have had enough, and you know, this is what gets me. This this right here is what gets me all the time. All right, watch this. So you say to them, okay, listen, here's what you do. First of all, you got to look at yourself. The eye already rule over us, do the somersault 700 times, right? Because they ain't into that. The head go down. I said, you really have to forgive Kevin, I hear you say that all the time on your teachings, but I mean, you got to be real. Come on now. When people do you something wrong, and that time I'm sitting there, that's like this, because I'm trying to figure out, you came here for a solution. I am giving you solution. Every solution I gave you, you have an excuse for the solution. What do you want from me? What do you want me to say to you? You know what they want? And that's how I know what type of people these are. These are people who've been under the, the demon pulpit pimping so seed for miracle. And, and that's convenient because they figure, okay, let me just pay you something. You do the work and then let the results take place on me. I think some people, if I could get saved for them, they would pay me for that. Kevin, I can't give you a $500 so you can get saved for me. <laughs> No, I want $1,000. <laughs> That's what I want. All right. Right. They don't want to put in the work, but yet they every day, every day they're not guarding them out. I'm so tired of this place. I'm so tired of these places. I mean, man, it's like it's never a break. It's never a rest. My God. Put one foot forward. You had a two back. Jesus. Lord. I'm so tired. The devil's so busy. They're not serious. When you're serious, you realize that your mouth was one of your biggest problems. When you're serious, you realize that your thoughts was your biggest problem. When you're serious, you cut all of that out. You say, you, you, when you're serious, seriousness means I have made up my mind to do something different. So you're not serious. What you came here for is to vent. What you came here for is to, to highlight Everyone who's doing you wrong, you're the victim and they're evil and you're a sweet person and you don't do anybody anything wrong and God rules are wrong. In your case, the curse came without a cause. There was a mistake and God need to put a clause in there that the curse will come out of cause for some people like me who was the victim.
and everybody working witchcraft on me, and I just do everything for everybody, and I'd give them the shit off my back and lies, pure lies. Now I realize you demon possess. You won't just fix. You demon possess now. We need to turn this into a deliverance service radio. It's the time. They're serious. I'm telling you, we're not poison serious. You all will attest. When when you chastise your children and they see it, they, they see you ain't playing, you you will know when they're serious, you know. When you see them make a change in what they're doing. Because I they, they realize that look, you ain't playing with them. Don't waste my time. If you are not ready, then go continue being oppressed. But don't come here with your foolishness. No. God told Joshua to remedy this problem so that the rest of Israel wouldn't be destroyed. You must kill Achan. You must stone him and his children them to death and then burn them. You must annihilate it. Now, why is he saying this? Is God just being vicious? No. These are the rules. The word accursed means to set something aside and destroy it utterly. It should not. There should be no evidence that it existed. That's right. There's some people you have in your life who has been marked for destruction, but the day you connected with them, you are also marked for destruction. That's why everything is going bad in your life. And you know it. You know it. You might not have known the spiritual implications like I'm laying it out to you now from scripture, but you think about you saying right now, this is so true. Ever since, ever since so and so, myself and so and so had this business together, whatever it is together, only I could only this person, everybody else I could pinpoint in my life, I never had this problem. But this person isn't just, and the thing about it, they're, they're nice, they're humble, they're pleasant. See, but that's just it. See, curses don't come with uh, looks. You, you ain't gonna look like a curse, no. Pleasant, regular person, but the spiritual covering over them, the endowment over them has now labeled them spiritually as something marked for destruction. As a result of that, because you touch, connect and bring it and, 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 and on your side or whatever, buddy, the same thing. So if you don't eliminate that, if you don't get that out of your, move it, whatever it is, get it out of the way. As long, listen, if you see Joshua Dawes did not take out Achan and his family, that scripture in uh, uh, Joshua 6 and 7 have been reading totally differently. I'm telling you that right now. You got to eliminate the root. That's the root of the problem. Think about it. That's the root of the problem. You want me to be honest with you? Some of y'all, I hope you're ready for this. Some of y'all, y'all parents, you hear me? Your parents who would not stop working witchcraft. You got them right there in your house. Right there. They still doing rituals. They still doing uh, putting salt and you right there like a fool allowing them, oh, I, can't, I can't be disrespectful to mommy. Well, suffer like mommy then, that's all. Suffer like mommy. Keep it up. Mommy telling you, oh, now you got to rub this on you. So, you know, you just get a promotion. You know people working rich like you. No, mommy, I serve Jesus. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I speak life for I shall live and not die. To, if only to declare the works of the Lord. Every tongue that has risen up against me in judgment, I condemn it, mommy. I ain't going to put no salt around here. Get out of here. You, you, you need to get out of here. I will pay for you to be some places because as long as you were here, all hell was breaking loose in this place because you would not stop your idolatry. Get out of here. Uh -huh, you know, watch how you talk to your man. I a woman. I live in church. I was saying before you. Yeah, and you was wicked before me. No. And until you are in your regular preacher, I, if you're looking for me to just tell you blessings, well, you got to look somewhere else. I am showing you what's preventing the blessings that you already have. You already have it. Seasons been coming and going and you never participate in them because of the impediments in your life that you're ignorant to. Hence, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Very simple, very clear, very straightforward. Mommy them, auntie them, still putting their hand to foolishness. Your uncle them, still burning candles. And you you notice this is the background. Then you can come in, but Kevin, what if you save, but your mommy and those still waking witch? You think that still could affect you? If you still got them in your place, you got the accursed thing right up all underneath your kidney. Get them out of there. I hear some of your boy, he call it. Okay, leave them there then. See that I can't please you? Leave them right there. Okay, let them work magic 24-7. And let's see where your life will go. Keep them right there. Don't move them. Keep them right there. I only given you scripture. All I given you is scripture. I ain't give you, I didn't tell you, kick them out is my opinion. In fact, in fact, what I'm telling you is more humane. God say, 
uh, stone them, then boy, no, I ain't gonna tell you that. You ain't gonna have me as no accomplice for murder. Get them out of your place. Get them out of your place. Get them out of your place. Remove them. Let's look at another scripture. Let me show you got to deal with these things. Not just remove them, whatever, come. Tell them, come, mommy, take your sheet, take your rug, everything you bring here, kid. Not carry it, kid out of here. Get out of here. Let's look at another scripture. Let's look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, all right? And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 6. L listen to the rules, yeah? Watch this. Okay, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 7, beginning out of verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it. He's talking about Canaan, which is now Israel today, right? This is the promised land. And I cast out many nations before thee. I'm casting out all of the Hittites, the Jesuit, the seven nations. The, all of them I'm getting out of there. And cast out many nations before thee. The Hittites, okay, and the Gergesites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Parasites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Seven nations greater and mightier than you. I am removing them to bring you in. He's about to give some rules now, all right? For them to be good managers when they go into the promised land, to, for them to live the abundant life, please listen to the rules. That's what he's telling Israel. Verse 2, and when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. And utterly, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make, listen what he's saying now. Do not make no covenants with them, nor show mercy unto them. Why is he saying that? You know why? He said, don't show no mercy. Because some of them who are cursed are beautiful, handsome, tall, dark, educated, bow legs, curly hair. She could never be cursed. It's fine as she is. No way. Now, God, you got this one here wrong. And some some desperate women, they're not him. And I could see he liked me bow legs, six foot two. Oh, no, no, no. This Jesus up here. <laughs> this, this God sent this one here. He said, don't show no mercy. I always said to myself, why would he say that? Because some of them are going to be so humble. Some of them are going to seem so compassionate. But all they are is a humble curse, a compassionate curse, a compassionate, restrictive, limited device that once implemented in your life, you will go no further. I'm trying to help you. Some of you could relate to what I said. That guy who left you those three pieces here, children, he was the nicest thing since sliced bread and you met him, right? He tell you, he start paying the bills and all. He said, baby, listen, you got to take care of nothing. I got all of this. Mm-hmm. See, you didn't know, but it's like, he was humble. Even when you get row, you get rowdy, he don't say anything to you. Why? Because he got a side piece, and he know once you finish, and he can get mad and storm out only to have an excuse to go to his side. He had a whole life. Whole life. But you would have never assumed that. Why? Because this curse came as a humble, submissive man, a gentleman. This woman who seemed to be so sweet, smelled so good. That's what attracted you to her. There's a perfume that she wear. Oh my God, it's just sending you wild. Nice curly hair. All you could think about is she and your convertible. And now you're flying all over your, your hairdress, greasing up all your hairdress, messing up all your. Anyway, <laughs> right. But it was, it was that's how the curse came. Subtle. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in uh, Genesis chapter 3, and it says that. The, ser the serpent was the most subtle, subtle beast of the field. And I went and look up that word one day, and I went and look it up from its origin. And the word subtle, one of the definitions that it gave, it says someone or something that is incognito. In other words, it never revealed a true self. It's always hiding behind an image, a facade, meaning that ugly on the inside, but on the outside is beautiful and pleasant and welcoming. And that's just how the enemy, the enemy now, he dresses the curse for you. He, he listened to you when you pray it. Okay, let me, let me send in a decoy. Let me send in a carbon copy. But behind that image is something to restrict them, something to limit them, something to utterly destroy them. So if you're one who go on handsome, pretty, bow leg job, material goods, status in life, uh, job status, you begging. Satan's job is so easy with you now. 
Because all you got to do is find a case who got a good uh, job, find a case with a nice car, find a case who's a drug dealer who's willing to give you money. If you're a person who like money, okay, fine. Let me find a case who got money. Because once I get all, all Satan wants the connection. Once the connection has been made, oh, that's it for you. It's lights out after that. Done. Finished. The very little work you have to do after that because you're already programmed to lose because you are connected to the accursed thing. I'm trying to help you. Don't get mad at me. So he says here, verse 2 of Deuteronomy 7, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. He says, Now when I surrender these Canaanites towards you, take them down. Don't have no conversation. You ain't having no committee, no nothing, no board of directors to figure nothing out. Shut them down. Kill them. So he says, when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenants, no agreements with them, nor show mercy. I don't care what they say. Because he's saying that now because when you meet them, some of them are going to be big influencers, well-connected. They say, you know what? I favor you, man. Here's what we can do. I had this business idea, and I want us to be 50-50. You don't have to give me any money. I'll pay for your 50. You know you're doing? My God, this God, this is Jesus. Hallelujah. Favor, this is favor. Mm, it's favor. Eh? You did not consult God. You never prayed about it. Where you were so broke and you're so desperate, you figured it's a blessing. But all of this is a curse. It is a curse disguised as a blessing. You never consulted God to say if this is the way forward. A lot of you who have made the mistake and you're in situations even as I'm speaking to you right now where you're locked down with this problem all because you never consulted God. The Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 9, it says that the Gibeonites who were the descendants of the Canaanites who God gave these same rules to, don't marry them, don't form no covenant with them, utterly destroy them, don't show no mercy. And the Gibeonites came there. What did they do? They, they tore up their shirt. They put holes in their shoes as if they were not a part of the Canaanites and said, we were traveling for miles looking for a place to stay. And, and they understood the power of covenant. And the first thing they said to Joshua, forge a covenant with us so that you will protect us. The Bible, the next verse says, and Joshua and the elders did not consult with God. Three days later, they figured out these fellas lied to us. They are in fact Canaanites. And they wanted to kill them. And the elder says, no, bro, you can't do that. You made a covenant in God's name to protect them. God will honor the covenant, even though he originally told you to destroy them. Ain't that something? Isn't that something? The people who God told you to kill from day one, right here we're reading it in Deuteronomy 7. God said to kill them, but let me show you how much God will honor the covenant that you make, the choices you make. Don't come away and make a mistake now. So now that you did it, now that you did it, remind me, it's still not the will of God, don't get me wrong. But now that you make up your bed like we see on the island, you got to lay in it. So God said, no, no, you can't kill them. Because if you kill them, you bring a curse on you. Remember, you swore by my name to protect them. This covenant was so powerful that 600 plus years later, King David is now in charge. And they're doing everything. I think there's 1 Samuel 21, somewhere around there. 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel 21, one of them. They're doing everything according to the Mosaic law. But there was a drought. And a drought back then represented a curse. So the Bible says that, that David went before God and said, God, what's happening here? We're doing everything right. We're doing all of the ceremonial laws. We're doing all of the atonement and everything. What's wrong? He said, the drought is the result of Saul and his bloodthirstiness went and killed some of the Gibeonites. And as a result, it brought a curse. In other words, Saul violated the covenant that Joshua made with the Gibeonites that was never supposed to be made. But God is still backing the covenant that was made because Joshua, who's a man of God, made it in the name of God. So David said, what do we do? What do we do? He said, no, no, what do we do? You go to the Gibeonites and try to work out some form of atonement. He went to the Gibeonites king at the time. And they say, okay, we could fix this. We could, we could make amends, but we want seven men from the house of Saul, no other place. And when they killed, cut their heads off or hung them, whatever it was, the rain started pouring out of the sky like nobody business. So don't tell me because this is real. So you see how <clears throat> the heavens were shut up from rain over the people of God. Why? Because they did something evil. No. It was someone in their lineage, Saul, who was already dead, violated the covenant. And now the covenant is speaking to the destiny of Israel. 
I talking to someone right now. Right now, I'm talking to you. Someone you connected with, someone you involved with right now that has put a a a a embargo on your life, an injunction, shut you right down. You are brilliant accountant. You are brilliant uh, uh, speech. Whatever you 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 are excellent with your hands. You are a critical thinker. The minute you connected with that clown, the minute you connected with that group, the minute you connected with that lady, shut your entire life down. But from where originally? The spiritual realm. From the spiritual realm, listen what happened. When you connected, you were marked, just like Cain, for destruction. In this case, though, everywhere you went, you were oppressed. Because one of the definitions of the word a curse, yes, it means to utterly destroy, ultimately, Meaning that there's a day set aside. There's no more hope for this person back then. We got Jesus Christ now. There's no more hope for them back then. So that they just wait on the day. And they don't even know when the day coming. But until that day come, they are going to be oppressed like everything they put their hand to. Who am I talking to tonight? Who am I talking to tonight? I've given you scripture. Who am I talking to tonight? Stop playing games with your life. Stop playing games with your life. Stop playing games with your life. It's time to pull away from the curse thing. Some of, some of y'all right now go into churches that are cursed. I uh, posted a couple of days ago uh, signs to show that evil altars are operating against your ministry, you or even your church. Go and read it. Read on my Facebook page and my uh, community and YouTube. Go and read it. Cursed church, where you have a dictator, a borderline sociopath for a leader. It's his way or no way. This is his church. If we don't like it, leave it. It ain't the people of God no more. It's, it's his church. It's his members. If you leave here, your curse, you ain't going nowhere. That's a curse right there. That place is a curse. Look at you. You've been sitting in that bench for 79 trillion years. You are now 80, Grammy. 80. You were saved for the part. You were saved from you was 20. Meaning that you was a Christian for 60 years. 60 years. You had 10 children. You left with two. Eight of them dead. How could that be? How come you had to bury your children? How come, Grammy? And the two would live in. One in, in the crazy house and the next one wandering the streets. Grammy, you were saved for 60 years. Grammy, you still renting. Your pension, what you get, you got to pay rent with it. You were saved for 60 years. What happened? I know what happened. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Because you've rejected knowledge, I have also rejected you, Grammy. And I didn't finish. I no longer would make you a priest. And guess what? I don't even remember your children no more. That's why they went down like that. I don't know why I'm talking to. Stop playing games. You think you're playing with God? You're playing with yourself, my friend. Stop playing games. Get serious with your life. Because you're not just impacting your life. You're impacting your seed. And even if you don't have children yet, whenever they do, they already mark for destruction. You don't listen to me, eh? i giving you the rules so that I ain't making nothing up. I ain't pulling nothing out of no heart. I am telling you the rules. That's why you see a lot of people in these cursed houses, egotistical, self-centered, arrogant leaders. They only care about them. They put a demand that the people must serve them. They are cursed, not even houses of God. They are cursed synagogue of devils. Look at the quality of people go there. How much of them are prospering? How much of them? Every week is the same song and dance. Every week. Every week. The pastor, the moderator, get up. Oh, glory to be to Jesus. Thank God for this Sunday. I could have been in the, in the more great now with a tie on my toe. But it's only because of his goodness. Glory. Let me hear you say hallelujah. Say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Say, God, I love you. God, I love you. Hallelujah. Now, crank up five fast songs. And right after that, we're going to go right into a melody. Okay, and the next person you hear will be that of the house of the pastor. And everybody jump up and clap and acting stupid. Uh, bring out those pans. It's seed time. Uh, as long as the earth remain it, there'll be seed. Same old song and dance. No deliverance. No breakthrough. You, you're more depressed when you leave before you came. Curse. You, for the day you connected with that place. Don't be like Grammy. Don't do 60 years there. And watch all of your descendants die and you bury them. Don't do 60 years there. And your pension got to pay your rent. And your pension isn't enough to meet your rent. Don't do it. Curses are real. They are cursing. 
they set aside for them to be utterly destroyed. Thank God for the grace of God. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. We could break those things now. Okay? But don't sit there. Don't, don't, don't let tradition, don't talk fool. Oh, my navel string in this church. My this is a I'm a fourth generation elder. I'm a fourth generation usher. And what does that mean? What does that mean? So when you die, when you die and you stand before God, now God is going to say, let me see the fourth generation ushers and elders. I got a special crown for them. Where you at? Where you at? There you are. Come here. Come here. Come right here. Right here. Fourth generation author. All right. You see that? Now, I don't see you on this list. Okay. I do see you on the list, but not this one. I see you on the list for hellfire. <laughs> That's the list I see you on. Because you taught being a third and fourth generation elder and usher, but it's going to usher you into the pearly gates. Unfortunately, that's going to usher you from the pearly gates. No, boy. Get it right. That's why I want the rules. Don't give me your opinion. Give me the rules. So, Grammy, you don't want to be like Grammy. 80 years of her life. huh? God give her 10 extra years. Because he promised you three score and 10. And by reason of strength, you get some more. He gave her that and still couldn't enjoy her life. Her life is full of sorrow. Watching her children die, leaving the grandchildren to struggle, to compromise themselves, to make ends meet. And ain't nothing she could have do. She couldn't put them through school. She couldn't give them a better life. She couldn't even put them in a home. Why? Because she sit under some demented sociopath, schizophrenic, who believed he was God. Or she believed she was God. And they believed that they were, that was their God. And they believe everything this joke said, except for what the rule said. And now, 80 years later, 80 years later, getting ready for the grave and have accomplished nothing in life, absolutely nothing. No form of, no, none of her children or grandchildren she could praise and brag about. None. Why? Because you've rejected knowledge. I have also rejected you. Very simple. My people perish. Why? Because they lack knowledge. He says that through knowledge, though, the just shall be delivered. What had Grammy bound for so many years? Well, Isaiah 5 and 13 answer that. He says, my people, my, the people of God, these ain't sinners. The people of God are going into captivity. Restrictions. You can't see it. They tied up. They can't move. They can't move. That's why this is what's not causing. This is what's causing them not to get the promotion. This is what's causing them to always hook up with the wrong person. And they only... Uh, 8.9 trillion divorce. This, this, and, and, and there's no disrespect for those who were divorced. No, what I'm saying to, because I was divorced, it's, it's showing you what was causing it all along. But no, you listen to this foolish preacher who won debate, not trying to discover the core of why you're here again. Huh? You won the fourth marriage. How did I get here? I never wanted to be here. But you can go listen to this clown again, though, to tell you more garbage, but never giving you the root. He's condemning you because you're doing it, but never giving you the solution not to do it again. So you find yourself back there. Now you're on the fifth marriage. You still come to this fool again. Still listen to the sociopath telling you garbage and the condemnation on you. I tell you, you probably even end your own life. Uh-uh. Kevin, come to give you solution. I come to give you solutions. I come to give, if you are a believer of Christ, if you was married 869 times, I don't care. Let there now therefore be no condemnation. God says, come here. Come talk to me, God. I can give you a solution. Don't listen to these fools. I come to give, I didn't come to, he said he did not send his son into this world to condemn. You are in the position you're in today because of that sociopath that you live, you, you, you just let preach to you. Preaching message of condemnation. God said, not Kevin, I did not send my son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, rescued, so that they would not perish. That's what he's saying. He says, if you have accepted and believed in me, you are not condemned, but only those who did not believe. So those who did not believe, who was married three, four, and seven times, they're condemned. They been, even if, Listen, even if they were only married once, but they didn't accept Jesus, they are condemned. Scripture. I'm only giving you scripture. That's what the scripture said. They are already condemned. End of story. All right? I'm going to give you one more, and I'm going to call it a night, and I'm going to finish this up tomorrow, okay? I want us to go, <clears throat> and this one here, what I'm going to show you right now, this one here is specifically, I'm telling you, some people you got coming over to your house. Now, let me tell you something I never believed in. Call me what you want. 
my son, when I was raising him, he couldn't dirty his mouth to come to me. But he go into a, he, if, he, if he could go to a sleepover, sleepover? You mean in one of these rooms in here? <laughs> Sleep what? See, and the reason why I was that way was because of the knowledge I'm now, I gained back then and now applying. You see, I can't assume that everybody don't work rich like me. I can't assume that because I don't go to the graveyard and do rituals and swing on the trees in there to call up spirits, I can't assume that everybody think that way. I can't do that. No. And furthermore, because I have this knowledge, and I don't care what nobody else think, I got to apply it. I can't have this knowledge and feel that the knowledge itself will protect him. No, it's an application. So no, no, none of my children could come to me and say, well, daddy, I can have a sleepover. Yeah, you can have a sleepover, baby. We got the kitchen in there. We got the dining room. We got all kind of floor here. We got rooms in there. If you want to sleep up in the ceiling, you can sleep. I don't care. You take a whole tent up there for me. I don't care. But I know one sleepover you ain't going. You ain't going to nobody else sleep nowhere. That ain't going to never happen. Now, let's look at some scriptures. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 7. But this time, let's go to the last verse, verse 26. Let's see what God said. Let's see what God said. Sleep over. That's a Kai. That's what that's a plus a new plane. That's like the Boeing Triple X sleepover. That's what the name. Because you couldn't mean leave this house to go sleep in somebody else's house. And I have no knowledge what's happening over there. No way. It will never in this life happen. Sleep over? That's a pajama pantsy. Because <laughs> that couldn't mean, that couldn't literally mean you leave this house and go sleep somewhere else. No, 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 no. Sleep over. <laughs> no boy. Huh? You think I can ever tell my mother Margaret Bonnaby I can sleep over? Well, if I won't sleep. Eternally, I could tell her that. <laughs> I could tell her that. So Deuteronomy 7. Neither shall thou... Well, hold on. Before we go there, let's go to verse... Uh, let's go to verse 25. Let's read from verse 25. It says, The graven images of their gods, meaning their idols and shrines, shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or the gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee. Least thou be snared. That word snared means trap. Least thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. So here's what that means. Let's say you find some amulet or some idol that whatever, somebody used to worship or whatever, it was gold or silver. And you say, you know what, I ain't using this to that. I mean, burn this down and make a nice piece of jewelry out of it. The scripture, because remember, what the scripture is telling you not to do that, but don't focus on that part of it, the surface. What it's telling you indirectly is the spiritual implications that comes along with it. So while you may say, well, I'm not using it to do sorcery with, it doesn't matter. It is a curse item. So where do you melt it down? Where do you wash it off with bleach? Where do you put uh, pepto bismol on it, uh, Dr. Pepper, whatever? That does not change what is attached to it spiritually. Because the minute you take it to do that, again, what did I tell you? The object really means nothing, you know. It's what's attached to it. And what I say to you, curses are managed by what? evil spirits. So what is really attached to this, what you call a point of contact, is the spirits. So if I take it and melt it and make a necklace, a ring, arm chain, whatever. See this look nice, eh? So I have just given the spirits that were always on that item, now the legal court. See, God can't stop it no more. Because he would be violating his own law. He said, the curse causeless, but there's a cause here. So the demons got a right. The spirit that is attached to that, whatever that spirit may be, have a right. And you're going to know what that spirit is because you're going to see the consistency of that negativity from that spirit in your life from that point forward. So he's saying here, don't melt no, you don't know. You, you said that you went to some antique store, you went to some pawn shop, and you saw this artifact or whatever it is. And you just so different that you like different stuff. But you don't know where that came from. You don't know the root of that. You don't know that. And the man say, listen, I don't know what it is. I, I'll give it to you for little or nothing. And you take it, and either you put it in your home, or you say, you know what? Let me melt this down, or let me, let me heat this up and bend it and forge it into something else. You don't know the spiritual implication behind it. 
Now everything breaking loose in your house. And because you're spiritually ignorant, you will blame everyone and everything before you ever. Because one of the things with these, one of the things that these things do is they blind the individual immediately. It's just like a person who go to a demonic church. The minute you step foot, you are polluted, you are corrupt. It blinds you. Uh, let me give you the rule for that. Uh, Leviticus 19.31. Have no affiliations with witches or familiar spirits or what have you. Then he tell you why. Least they defile you. The word defile means to change, alter, or augment something from its original. So I came there blessed and fully intact, right? But the minute I step foot on that tarot car reader property, the minute I step foot in that psychic reader, even though I didn't come to be read, I didn't come to be read, my friend, I'm just accompanying my friend, he said, have no affiliation, no association, least, meaning this is what will happen, least you become defiled, you become corrupt. So now you got another thing to look at because now you're going back in your mind. Boy, I remember one time I was at a carnival or a fair and this lady, this gypsy lady, I didn't think nothing of it. And then to be honest with you, one or two things she said was true. Now Kevin is coming back with biblical rules and telling me that that thing that seems so simple, that thing that seems so nonchalant, that could be the cause of what I'm going through today. Yes, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6. Isaiah 5 and 3, my people are gone into captivity, spiritual restrictions. Why? Because they lack the same knowledge I'm telling them right now. The fellow who you had the two children for, who you put in court 600 times for child support, the state can't even catch him. You're struggling so bad that you have to compromise your body to make so that your children will eat food. Men come into your life only to have sex with you. But guess what? The fellow you had the two children for, okay? You could recall a discussion in your heart. And he made it a joke. You know, my, my Grammy was a witch. Well, at least that's what I was told. She was a witch. And I ain't gonna lie. She was a wicked woman. But I ain't gonna lie. She didn't like me though. And you, kee, 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 kee. now that you're coming into this information, and now you're taking this information as a mole, and now you're going back on some stuff. And now you begin to see why you restrict it. Now you're beginning to see why you are limited. Now you are beginning to see every time you go, it's like something pulling you back twice where you were prior to. So let's finish read this. Verse 25 of Deuteronomy 7. The graven images of their God shall ye burn with fire. Thou shall not desire the silver or the gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee. Don't take it upon you. Don't take it in your house. Don't take it in your car. Don't take it nowhere. Because they are they are attached to them are evil spirits waiting for the covenant. What is the covenant? Me going against this law. I mean, I'm accepting it. Waiting for that covenant to be established to facilitate this specific evil in your life. Nor desire the silver or the gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, least thou be, least thou be snared. The word snared means least you be trapped. If you are trapped, that means you are restricted from doing what you regularly do. You cannot move about it. Right? If you are caught in a trap, you become restricted. That's why I said to you, when you hear the word curse, think immediately for quick understanding, restrictions. It says, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared or trapped therein. For it is in it, for it is an abomination, is something that is detestable to the Lord thy God. Verse 26. That's what I wanted to get to. Neither shall thou bring, listen, an abomination into thine house. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Now. Some people are going to get offended. But that's all right, because I'm wrapping up radio. Now, we are about to go very deep right now. You hear me? And what I'm about to say is not my opinion. You can come at me and you can come for me as if of my opinion. But I can, I can read it for you. 
and then I can jump into the example. Don't come for me because you're wasting your time. Go correct what needs to be corrected. All right? Let's read this again. I just want to pause there because I I smell the spirit of offense from wherever you are, and I know it coming, and I want it to come. I want it to come. Okay? Verse 26 of Deuteronomy 7. Neither, listen to this carefully, neither shall thou bring an abomination. Don't bring. What is the word abomination? Something that God despises. He hates it. Neither bring an abomination into thine house. Uh huh. Least thou be a cursed thing like it. So let's stop right there. Now, I can give you one example, but I can give you homework. So your homework is going to be this. I want you to go to Google and type in a list of abomination, K KJV, King James Version, or in the Bible. I want you to see that. You're going to see lying. That's an abomination. You're going to see, uh, you're going to see homosexuality. This is, see, because you're thinking, listen to what you're thinking. When I say a curse, you say, Kevin, that makes sense. Because the guy who I used to date, or the guy used to date, she was into tarot card reading and psychic and horoscope. Man, you are, you are point. Then some of you are saying, but but I never had a person like that. At least I wouldn't have known. But but I found out that the guy that I dated was homosexual. Oh, okay. So if he was a homosexual, and the Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination. Okay, and you had a me again in your house? Okay, let's see what the rules say. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house. Okay, so let's go over the facts again now. Don't come for me. Go for this. He or she had those tendencies and actually engaging in them. You found out later. But they lived with you. They stayed in your house, right? And ever since that happened, all hell break loose for you. In a negative way, of course. Well, let's see why. Neither shall thou bring. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house, least or unless thou be a cursed thing like it. Okay, so two things I'm getting here now. Number one, he made it very clear in the ending part. He said, if I bring this abomination into my place, he's about to say something that I didn't know before. The abomination in and of itself is cursed. How do I know this? Because he says, if you bring the abomination into your house, you will be cursed like it. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love, I love scripture. Mighty God. I love scripture. My God. Mm -mm. Listen to me. I can help you all tonight. I'm here to help you tonight. Listen, we living in a world right now, especially America. We've got the children head mess right up. You got big science adults who got bachelor's degrees and PhDs talking foolishness, but uh, pronouns and they the foolishness. So the children now feeling comfortable. And when the children take on mommy, I feel like I'm a boy, even though she's a girl. Mommy, I feel like I'm a girl, even though he's a boy. The Bible labeled this act as an abomination. You can't put your children out, right? Pray for them. Pray for them. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the redemption, shared blood of Christ. You better thank God for that. Thank God that he makes some prompt. That's why if you're not saved, you're in trouble. If you are saved, there is a package that you got. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, 11, verse 21b, it said that the seed of the righteous, so if your child gay or fighting those tendencies, don't, don't worry about that, go to the cross because you got, Father, you said to me, my child will be delivered. That child is guaranteed deliverance to be rescued from the peril of that evil, that spirit. The Bible says in uh, Psalms 112, verses 1 to 2, praise ye the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, and delighted greatly in his commandments. And what's going to happen? His seed. First thing he talk about. His seed shall be mighty. Father God, you said my child will be mighty. My child will be great. This homosexual act is not a part of my child's destiny. I reject it, renounce it, denounce it. Don't, no, don't curse him out. Don't call him no sissy. Don't call him no punk. Stop it. You are a co-conspirator to, to you and that child demise. You are a child of God. And there are promises that that's why you need to read the Bible for the rules and the benefits that you have as opposed to listen to these robbers telling you come sow a seed for the spirit of homosexuality to leave. They're liars. They're liars. 
Father, I break this abomination off of my child. I break this curse. I just read it. You said, if you bring this abomination into my into the house, I will be cursed like the abomination. That's what I'm reading here. But it didn't end there. Watch this. Let's read some more. Verse 26 of Deuteronomy 7. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Now, I'm going to end here, and tomorrow we're going to deal with the next curse, all right? But I'm ending here for a specific reason, because there's a surprise I have for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a surprise for you, and the surprise is right in the scripture. I hope you're ready for this. Okay, put on your school bag, yeah, because that's the last plunge we can do right here. Okay, we're going very deep. Now, if you don't want to get bent on the way back up, all right, you don't want to get too much whatever, listen here carefully. Remember what you just read, right? Remember what you just read, all right? And then the last part of it, listen what he said. And when I can read the whole thing again. I can read the whole, I can read the whole scripture in uh, Deuteronomy 7, 26. I got a surprise. I hope you guys are ready, all right? Neither shall thou bring an abomination. Now, remember your homework is, because I can ask you tomorrow. Go on Google and type in abominations of the Bible, KJV, King James Version, all right? And it can pull up all the scriptures for you. And I want you to write those abominations now, because now you are aware of them. But not only now you're aware of the abomination, you also understand that abominations are not just something that God detests. It all, they are also cursed. So whether it's a person, place, or thing, it is curse. Okay? So if your son, daughter, or even you are a liar, the Bible says lying is an abomination. That's a curse on you. There, there's a spirit managing that spirit. of It's a lying spirit. It's a curse on you. And a curse simply means you're in bondage, you're bound to it, and you, you do it even when you don't want to do it. But again, if you are a child of the living God, okay, or even if your parents are, there, there are two avenues you could shut that down because the seed of the righteous shall, not might, shall be delivered, okay? But anyway, let me get to my point. Read it again. So Deuteronomy 7, verse 26, Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house, okay? Least thou be, least thou be a cursed thing. I try my best to help get past this, but I, another thought just came to me. Kevin, I hear you, but ain't no way in the world I put my brother out because where he's going to go. So what? I mean, God made him that way. He, he was born this way. I ain't arguing with you. I told you before, I don't debate scripture. You either do it or you don't do it. You either believe it or you reject it. I told you the Bible is a book of laws, rules, and principles, as well as a book of, of rewards and a book of penalties. Rewards if you do it, penalties if you don't. The Bible is also considered a book of preventatives. I can prevent the tragedies if I do what it say. It is also a book of antidotes, meaning I need to seek for the solution now when I mess up. It is totally up to you. Don't come talking no fool to Kevin, but you... That's why I don't like these insensitive preachers because they always talking and they never in the position. I don't need to be in no position. I am only telling you what the rules say. I don't know why all this around me like I wrote this Bible. I am only giving you the rules. It's the rule book. It is the manual. It is the handbook for humanity. This determines how you will live or in terms of good or bad, depending on how you follow these rules. So you... I say to Ray, Kevin, listen, I, my my sister on that side, well, I can be real with you, Kate. She carrying most of this right here. I don't care how much of the rent she carrying. I, I don't know why you tell me all your personal business. All I could give you, are the, why are you all doing like I supposed to kick in for the next half of the rent? I, that have nothing to do with me. I am not being comical. All I'm saying to you is the rules. Stop trying to to change the rule. You know you should be saying rather than talking fool to me, Father God, help me to get out of the situation. Help my sister. Help my brother in law. Take this case. You won't say that yet. You first you won't come at the messenger. Don't come at me. Don't come for me. 
pray. Father, I know you don't like this. This is an abomination. I have read in your word. I could never say I didn't see it. I've read in your word that I must not bring the accursed thing into my home. And if I do, I will become cursed like the abomination that I brought here. Father, I pray for my sister, my whoever it is. They live in here, Father. Now, now it's beginning to make sense. I see why things are so difficult. I see why. I see why we could barely pay the rent. This I see why I brought the accursed thing. I have violated your law. Forgive me now. Help me. Help me not only to remedy the situation, but help my sister, help my cousin, whoever it is. You're not praying against them. We're not fighting them. It's a spirit. We realize that. So we're dealing with the spirit. I ain't telling you kick them on the head, beat them up. No, I'm telling you, I'm saying you go before God. God, you know my situation. You know my finances here. You know I need this person here. And again, not only do I need them to help me, but even if you decide to move them, Lord, I pray that they, I pray for their change. So you don't be selfish to say, I just want them out because I don't want this case on me, so I don't prosper. No, that's being selfish. You got to look out for their well-being also. You got to be wise. Let's get to the point. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be, least thou be what? Least thou be cursed like it. We get that. But thou shalt utterly detest it. Detest what? The curse, the, which is what? The abomination. And the abomination will be what? Well, in this specific case, it will be this person who went to these things. Okay, watch it. And not just for homosexuality, whatever you see is on the... Uh, uh, under uh, abomination. And I, I can show you some of them before I end. Listen. And thou shalt utterly abhor it. Thou shalt utterly abhor it. Right? Abhor what? The abomination, which is a what? A curse. Thou shalt utterly abhor it. Uh huh. For it is a curse. Thing. Now I want you to circle. I want you to circle where it says curse thing. I want you to circle the word thing. Okay. So when I went and look up that word, the curse thing, which would be the abomination thing, which would be whatever. Listen what the curse thing is. Guess, guess what the curse with the word, what the Hebrew word is. The Hebrew word for that phrase where you see the curse thing is the same word for a curse. We let that sink in a little bit. At the end of verse 26 of Deuteronomy 7, after him telling you, all right, he made it very clear. Okay, don't bring the accursed thing into your place, place, lest you become cursed like it. You must detest it and get rid of it. Because that thing is curse, or the curse thing. And it's the same word, the same exact word that is used in Joshua 7, verses 16 to 17, when God talk about the accursed city, the accursed thing, lest you become a curse. And what did we say a curse is? Something that is set aside for destruction. There's an assigned date for that person, that thing to be destroyed. If there's any reason for you to be praying for your loved ones, your friend, if they're on that side, or whatever it is, if there's it, because remember, if it's an abomination, at the end of the scripture, it, it now takes it a little bit deeper. It says, whatever this abomination is upon, it's marked for destruction. It's a curse. Now, I, I'm supposed to end here, but I just want to give you a head start on some things that are an abomination, right? Okay, I just want to give you a head start. So let's go to Deuteronomy 18, and, and we're done. I just, I just need to show you this. Deuteronomy 18, okay? Deuteronomy 18. Let me see if I can find this now. Deuteronomy 18, where is it? Is it Deuteronomy 18? Okay. Deuteronomy 18, where it talks about thou shall not be entertaining necromancy and all that other stuff. 
is it only 18? Or shall I point to thou art coming to the land? Okay. When thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after their abominations. This is it. Okay, good. Good. So let's go to Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Okay. And we're going to start from verse 9. Okay. Because what you're also going to see, okay, you are in here challenging your homosexual family members, they're the least of your worries. Let's talk about your witchcraft working uh, sister and brother and Grammy and mummy them who got a bunch of candles and foolishness and little uh, effigy altars and little dolls around here. People name on it in, the, in your place. Okay? Now, everything, let me preempt this, everything that was done in Canaan at the time, God was preparing Israel to go there. Everything God is telling them not to do, as we're about to read, this is what they were doing. But that ain't the part I want you to focus on. Everything that they were doing over there, God labeled it as abominations. See, what we're doing now, we're diversifying this word. See, because most people would say, yeah, that's true. Homosexuality is the abomination. Yeah, that's true. And, 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 and lying is about, yeah, yeah, that's the big ticket once. But we can see some more. And this only scratching the surface of what the Bible say more of, particularly there in Proverbs 6 somewhere. Anyway, you do your homework. You can find them. So Deuteronomy 18 verse 9. Moses now speaking to the children of Israel. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. He's talking about Canaan. At this moment, the Canaanites still inhabited the land and they were not in the land as yet, the, the Israelites. So they're being given instructions prior to going down. So verse 9 of Deuteronomy 18, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not, thou shalt not learn to do after, listen, the abominations, plural, of these nations, everything that they're doing over there, they were deep into sexual perversion, homosexuality, the works. But the truth is, they wasn't even doing it for pleasure. This was a part of worshiping the gods that they serve. Thou shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, no ritual sacrifices of your children, or that use a divination or an observer of times or an enchanter, or a witch. No tarot card reading, no horoscope reading, no crystal balls, no cards, no candles, no none of that. Verse 11. Or a charmer, of a cons or a consultant, consultor with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer, those who claim to communicate with the dead. For all that do these things, for all that do these things, tarot card reading, all that do these things, Incense, candle, uh, seance, uh, wooji, wooji board, whatever the name, uh, all of this voodoo, witchcraft, idols, amulets, charms, uh, uh, omens, such as if you driving on the road and the black cat run cross, turn around as you have seven years of bad luck, all of that fall and you need that. So he says in verse 12 of Deuteronomy 18, for all or anyone who participate, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And if the Lord has labeled you as one who are doing these things as an abomination, then according to what we read in Deuteronomy 7 verse 26, the last sentence you are a cursed thing, and that means you are marked for destruction. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your wisdom, for your knowledge, for your understanding. We thank you for you blessing us with so much information, so much revelation, so much insight, foresight, hindsight, every other sight. Thank you, Father God, for enlightening our understanding. As a result of it, Father God, we commit tonight because a lot of us didn't know these things. A lot of us were moving about life haphazardly. And really, I'm talking about the believers. And we were wondering, why is it we did everything? We fasted. We did this. We did that. And there still seemed to be no form of progress. And even if there is any form of achievement of progress, it is so little, but only to pull us back even further. We couldn't understand the mystery 
the mystery as to why is it that we as believers who have been told that because Christ became a curse for us and Christ and curse is anything hang upon a tree according to Galatians 3, then why are we still suffering under these curses? But Father God, we also discovered tonight that your people, your people perish because they lack knowledge. Hosea 4 and 6. We discover tonight that your people are gone into captivity again, the same reason, because they lack knowledge. However, however, Proverbs 11 verse 9b is very clear. And it says that through knowledge, through knowledge, meaning that the acquiring along with the application of it, through knowledge shall the believer of Jesus Christ be delivered. So what does that mean? Even Christians need deliverance. But deliverance from what? Because I thought we were rescued from the curse. Now you see we have an arrow. You need to, you, yes, you were saved. You accepted Jesus Christ. You were saved from the judgment that led to eternal damnation, but that's only one side of it. Now you need to be delivered from the curses. And that's where you now use your authority in Christ. One of them is all of those people that took pieces of parchment papers and wrote your name on it until the pages were covered and put it on the particular candle and begin to call your name. I curse Johnny. Johnny will never prosper, blah, blah, blah. He said, now that you have my power, now that you are a member of the kingdom, don't expect for me to fix it. You fix it. And I told you how to do it in Isaiah 54 and 7. Every tongue, the word every, I love the definition. It means without exception, meaning the tongues that I hear speaking evil about me, including the ones I didn't hear. So every tongue speaking over any altar, over my pictures, over my name, over my belongings, my personal effect, as a child of God, only them could do it. As a child of God, as a benefit, I condemn every tongue spoken against my destiny, spoken against my son, my daughter, my wife, spoken against our finances, spoken against our ministry, spoken against our cars, our homes, our bank accounts. Every tongue that, that declared poverty, that declared sickness, that declared failure, Father, I thank you for this power. You said we must condemn. In other words, you're telling us that heaven is going to back us 100% when we move in our authority as opposed to sitting down and thinking the curse is going to walk away. I condemn every word, every tongue, everything that has spoken contrary to the will of God for my marriage, for my life, for my wife, my children. Father God, our health sound every tongue the ones I heard and the ones I didn't hear, I condemn it. I condemn it. I've declared it guilty and it must be accompanied with a, with a destruction, with destruction, meaning that, that it will proceed no further. It will not manifest. It will not take shape in my life. Why? Because I was waiting for it to do it by itself. No, 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 no. I acquired the knowledge and now I'm making it applicable. That's how you break curses. I don't sit on my hide with foolish understanding to believe that because I got saved, the curses are going to fly away. Absolute foolery. God already did what he had to do before the foundation of the world. Now there's a part that we have to do. This is why he says we are heirs with him and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. In other words, it's a partnership. They don't do what they had to do. Now I must do what I need to do. That's why he said, whatever I bind on earth, current has already been bound in heaven. Kept my heaven been supporting me. He says, whatever I loose upon this earth, heaven has already L loosed it, ED, past tense, way before I even started it. Heaven was always waiting on me. These foolish preachers, not all of them, foolish preachers preaching garbage and tradition that have nothing to do with the scriptures. And if they preach it as rules, they would understand it. Heaven was waiting to support me. Heaven looked down and watched me or whoever else suffering from poverty, suffering from cancer, and wondering, when are these people going to speak the word of God so that the angels of the Lord can work for them? They can't because no one is teaching them that. When the Bible says in Psalms 103 verse 20, Oh, how excellent are the angels in their strength who hearken under the commandment of God and the voice of his word. What is the voice of his word? His, his rules, his laws, his principles. So the angels of the Lord, whom the Bible says, Psalms 91 verses 11 and 12, For I have given my angels, plural, charge over Kevin to keep him in all his ways. 
that if he as much as dashes foot against the stone, they're right there. But they're waiting for Kevin to speak the word. They're waiting for Kevin to decree the word. No. Instead, Kevin is decreeing everything except the word of God. I so broke. Nothing never worked out for me. You put one step forward, you got to take two back. My God. Look like only the sinners will, will prosper around here. Only the white man prosper. Why the blackies got to be in the back? My God. This place so racist. Trump racist. Biden racist. That your president, your mommy. Everybody you blame and accept you. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Father God, for being ignorant of your word and wallowing in the ignorance. And again, we are shocked that our life is going nowhere. After putting in 10 years, 7 years, 5 years, 50 years of Christianity and could see absolutely no fruit. But I, I know why. My people perish because they lack knowledge. My people are going into captivity because they lack knowledge. The common denominator is a lack of knowledge. The resources are there. The angels are there. The armor of God is there. The word of God is there. They put that aside and they figure they could get those things by shelling out seed, giving love offering, giving pastoral offering, first fruit, third fruit, monkey fruit, tithing. None of that has changed their, their situation and their program to be super foolish to continue doing it after 60 years of being saved, no changes in their life, and refuse to discontinue that and commit to doing the word of the living God. Father, forgive me when I used to do that. Forgive me for being a fool. Forgive me for being presumptuous and stubborn by committing to tradition. When your word is very clear, you said in your word, I think it's Matthew 15, 5 to 6, and, and Mark uh, 13, 7, 7, 13, you said that because of my tradition, because I was so committed to following the sociopath, I was so committed to following this arrogant, egotistical, self-centered, pompous human being called a pastor over here, not all, because I was more committed to them, because there was my papa, because there was my spiritual covering, because there's my spiritual leader, whatever they said, I call it God. While they became rich, while they traveled, while they had vacations, while they put their children to college, and I had to sit back and watch and say, well, you got to look out for the man or woman of God. Uh-oh. Uh-uh. Those days are finished. Those days are done. Those days are finished. Done. Father, I thank you for the wisdom. I thank you for removing the scales from my eyes. But I realized what happened. I had to warn them to be removed. You don't remove them because you tired of me walking in blindness. I had to make up my mind that enough is enough. I understand the deal. I can't blame you. I can't blame mommy. I can't blame the government. I can't blame socials. I can't blame nobody. If I truly want change in my life. I got to check me. I got to arrest me. I got to handcuff me and take myself to the courthouse and have myself judged for being ignorant. I can't blame no pastor, even if they crooked. You know why? Because I had a copy of the rule book. It wasn't like the rule book was kept from me. I got to go to any church, any, any bookstore and get me a copy. The problem was I made them my Bible. I made them my God. And as such, I, I submitted to their rules, their doctrine, their theology, their garbage. And every time it panned out failure for me. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Father God, for, for blindly walking in complete ignorance while in church holding the rule book, holding the book, reading from the book, but have no commitment to follow it. You know why? Because we are blind. The Bible says of the gospel of Jesus Christ be hid. It is only hid from those who are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded, not their eyes, but their minds. Thank you, Father God, for renewing my mind. And just like you said in your word, Romans 12 and 2, now because my mind has been renewed through the word of God, because I see the book, the Bible, the handbook of life, the manual of humanity, as a book of laws, rules, principles, and precepts, as a book of antidotes and preventatives, as a book of rewards and penalties, because I see it that way now, well, guess what? It's become my favorite book. I look forward to researching to see where I violated, where I could correct it now. How could I prevent it? I understand now. I don't rely on a human being to lead me. I can read. I have no excuse. I have the manual of life. And even if they're saying something that I don't agree with, especially if the Bible is against it, I'm out of them because I got this. I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to do what you do. I do with these words because at the end of the day, I cannot blame them. God is going to say the same thing I'm telling you right now. 
Okay, you said the pastor didn't teach you right. You said the pastor had you paying for seed for miracles. Okay, and that's wrong. He shouldn't have done that. And the pastor had you picking up his children. Don't, that is so wrong. So let me see if I get this straight. So you never had a copy of the rule book? Oh, yeah, I got a couple of them home. Okay. You could read, right? Yes, sir. So what's the problem? Because if you read my word and you truly love me, like you said, you would have obeyed my commandments, not the pastor commandments. And this is no attack on them. We're talking about the no good ones, not the ones who fool for God and do what is right. So if you want to be a fool, okay, if you are in 2024 in a voice position and you came in and going into your 100 year of this, then go right ahead. Continue to ignore the rules. Continue to submit to tradition. The Bible says it is because of your tradition. All rules again, laws. Listen to penalty. The word of God will be of no effect in your life. There will be no manifestation. You had no manifestation. Don't blame God. Blame you. Get out of here. Blame you. Sitting under these people who are telling you stories every week. Every week. You're watching your children suffer. You're watching your children having children for different people. Okay? Why? Because they, they want to live that way. They didn't plan. That wasn't a part of their life plan. But this is what happened once, once crisis has entered. It starts the cycle that was already in the bloodline. Because the people are ignorant to the rules. So the enemy will send in the curse well-dressed. Send in the curse very articulate with words. Send in the curse with plenty of money. Send in the curse disguise in what you need. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for rejecting your word. Please forgive us because we read tonight. You said that because we rejected knowledge, this is what you said, meaning that, I mean, it's clear. If, if we rejected it, that means you found ways for us to receive it. But clearly when it came, we rejected it. My God, we rejected it. And you said because we have rejected knowledge, you said you have now rejected us. You didn't end there. And you say you will also forget our children. Father, there's ever a time we ask for forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness tonight. Father, rip this page out of our out of our book of life and let us start all over again. Your word declares according to 1 John 1 and 9, and you said that we confess our sins, that not only are you faithful and just to forgive us of them, but you promise the cleanses of all unrighteousness. You said in the book of Micah, very clear, that you will now take those sins and toss them into the sea of forgetfulness. It is not your desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You said in your word that you'd not send your son into this world to condemn us. That's You are not that type of God. You will convict us. But you are not here to condemn us. The only ones who are condemned are those who refuse to accept you. Clearly stated in John 3 and 18. So, Father, tonight we bless you for the second portion of the revelation of understanding curses. And we pray, Father God, tomorrow night that you will take us even deeper into that next part of curses that take us on a whole new, on take us on a whole new different level. Father, we bless you, Father, we honor you, Father, we praise you. And we ask these things in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So, folks, that is it from me. So I told you, I told you it's going to be short tonight. Two hours and 42 minutes and 45 seconds. I tell you that. You all don't listen. <laughs> okay? But listen, your homework, remember, go and look up these abominations. You've got a lot of stuff tonight. I hope you've been writing notes. Go and unpack this stuff. Educate yourself to the point that you're able to explain it to others. Again, let me warn you, as my students, do not seek debates. Do not seek debates. Whenever you're making a statement, always use this prefix. The Bible is right. The Bible is the final authority. I could be interpreting this wrong. I'm only going based on that. Because when you do that, you're showing humility. You're showing that if someone come back and really show you where you're wrong, that, okay, glad, I'm glad that you say that. I don't feel no kind of way. I'm happy because I'm here to learn. That's what we're here for. We are here to learn. We are not here to fight one another. We are not here to say you wrong. We're not, no. And, and for those of you who don't have no de decency in decorum, here is what you do. If your teacher, whoever is wrong, or you think they're wrong, or you have a scripture, a lot of people do it to me. You know they do, and I honor them for this. They feel a certain way about a certain interpretation. So they would email me, uh, Pastor, Kevin, Minister, whatever you want, I don't care. Uh, I heard you quote this scripture, and this is what I was told all my life. Could you bring some clarity? And to me, I welcome that humility. 
You ain't coming in arrogant because when I see that, I delete that. I ain't running out because I don't know this can go into a debate. Now, if you come in to learn, and some of you who got emails from me, some stuff you sent me, and I said, you know what? I never saw that scripture before. I appreciate you sending me this. Let me do some research, and I will give you my take on it. And I have responded to them. So again, I'm learning too. Don't, don't come talk fool to me because I am not going to debate you. I'm not going to call your name on my program. You are nothing to me in terms of your agenda. I am here to teach. I am here to learn. And that's the position I want you to take. I don't want you to go about trying to be right. The goal that we're seeking here is to do what is right based on the spirit of truth pointing us, pointing us into all truth, okay? So you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. Uh, God bless you.